The Calder Cup Finals shift to the sweetest place on earth. Mr. Calder has visited Chocolate Town more than any other city in the American Hockey League. If the Bears are going to win it for a 12th time, they need to get back on track. Down 0-2, they return to Giant Center in front of a raucous crowd for Game 3. It's the Bears, it's the Coachella Valley Firebirds. It's on Fox 43. Alongside Fox 43 Sports Director Todd Sadowski back with us today. I'm Zach Fish, the voice here, Hershey Bears, as Hershey comes into tonight needing a win, down 0-2 in the series. Looking to get back on track, Todd. This is where it belongs, right? We talked about this all year long when we watched this team, Zach. We thought, hey, in June, we could see the Calder Cup Finals in Hershey. Not exactly the situation we wanted them to be in, down 2-zip, but they still have a chance. Look, congrats to you, congrats to the organization. You get a chance, that's why you sign up to work for the Hershey Bears to call Calder Cup games. Here we are, they gotta get this one though, backs against the wall. Shut out in both games, one and two, but home cooking hopefully will be good for the Hershey Bears back on Giant Center Ice. For more, we send it to Andrew Kalista, just how nice home ice has been. As the Bears return to their den here at Giants Center, the home ice sheet has had a lot of roar directed towards opponents. The Bears 23-9-2-2 on the year. That is a win clip at nearly 70%. Coachella Valley in the playoffs, 3-4 and four on the road. And this home crowd is ready to growl, claw, and roar their way to a victory here tonight. Thank you very much, Andrew. It is good to be back in Chocolate Town. Games 3, 4, and if needed, 5 will all be here and hey, we, we hope we remember how to call some goals. It's been a while for the Hershey Bears. They got a lot of offensive talent. They seem to put the puck in the net. If that game five is going to be needed, they need to go back to the winning formula, which a lot of times is score first. And they got to find some offense in front with the traffic, however they can get it done, Zach. But when you win in the Hershey Bears this year, it's one of those three to two games. They score first and they stay in front the entire way and they close it out. They got to get back to that. They got to get in front first, keep the crowd in the game, and we'll see what happens. Got to find a way to beat Joey Decord, who's been perfect so far. Game three coming up from Chocolate Town, USA. The Bears, the Coachella Valley Firebirds. It's next on Fox 43. I remember kind of thinking like, oh my gosh, I think we could be sisters, you know, because yes, I think we look, right. you know, yeah, and I don't think at that time, I think you're the one to tell me that we had the same yeah. birthday. It's really unbelievable when you think about it because it's been like really over 20 years that you were my mother and father's banker, you became my banker, and now Fran is in her third year of college and you're her banker. And so unbelievable because I'm just 20 years old. <laughs> When I coach kids sports, I teach my players about teamwork, winning, and always giving 100%. At Chase and Boscolo, we've been using those same principles since 1986 to help injured people rebuild their lives. We answer your questions, treat you like family, and fight for your best interests. We're lawyers that care. If you've been injured, call Chase and Boscolo, 1-800-728-5898. you to the atmosphere that is Capital One for the Stanley Cup playoffs. I really like to get to know the players and just meeting some of the other season ticket holders. Pretty special to have such a great support from the fans and that's really what it's all about. down here at Giant Center in Chocolate Town, USA. The Calder Cup Finals are back. The Cup has resided here in Hershey more than any other city in American Hockey League history. If the Bears are going to hang a 12th Calder Cup banner, they got their work cut out. Trying to come back down 0-2 in the series for the Coachella Valley Firebirds. But they haven't seen the Bears dead yet. And as Hershey gets set to take the ice, the fans wave their rally towels and roar. With Todd Sadowski, I'm Zach Fish. The oldest, the most historic team, the sweetest place on earth. Not going to be so sweet for the Coachella Valley Firebirds as the Bears get set to take the ice. They'll listen into the crowd as they roar tonight. We're just about ready for game three of the 2023 Calder Cup Finals from Chocolate Town, USA. Hershey Bears hockey is on Fox 43.2 and NBC Sports Washington all across the Bears Capitals radio networks and AHL TV2. 
with Todd Sadowski. I'm Zach Fish, Andrew Kalista to join us ice side in a bit. It is an electric atmosphere here at Giant Center tonight, Todd. And as they announce the starting lineups, the Bears know that their backs are against the wall. There's no one to blame but themselves. And they want to use home ice to their advantage. They were the best team in the East on home ice in the regular season. Zach, you can feel the energy. You can feel the excitement. You can also feel the pressure. It's palpable. They know the backs are up against the wall. Down to zip. Have not had a good showing. Look, the hockey world is watching. The hockey world is listening. We're thrilled to bring it to you. It's time for the Hershey Bears to respond and get themselves back in this series. Head coach Todd Nelson looks on as he needs his top six to produce no goals in the Calder Cup Finals. The Bears are down 0-2 in the series. They got shut out 5-0 and 4-0 in Coachella Valley in both the games, but now games number three. Game number four Thursday, if necessary, Saturday. Game number five before the series were to shift back to Coachella Valley. The Bears want to get it there. They need some home cooking to make it happen. Looking forward to this one here today. In a moment, we are going to have a moment of silence, but right now, it is not that. It is a roar for Hunter Shepard, the Bears netminder between the blank stock. Yeah, and we're going to look for any way possible to get offense. You know, the five from Coachella Valley, the four from Coachella Valley, not as concerning as the zero. Willie Marshall, a legend in the hockey world, passed recently, joined public address announcer Jared Ronsky for a moment of silence. Ladies and gentlemen, on June 2nd, the Hershey Bears and the hockey world mourned the loss of a hockey legend, Willie Marshall. A talented scorer and playmaker, Marshall dominated the AHL over 20 seasons. He made his mark in Hershey playing in parts of seven seasons with the Bears from 1956 through 63. He won the AHL scoring title in 57-58, finishing with 104 points in 68 games. He won two Calder Cups with the Chocolate and White in 1958 and 1959. Marshall had his number 16 retired in Hershey and was enshrined into the Bears Hall of Fame in 2012 and inducted into the AHL Hall of Fame in 2006. Willie passed away at the age of 91. At this time, we ask that you Please join us in a moment of silence as we honor the memory for one of the greatest players in Hershey Bears in AHL history, Willie Marshall. A little bit of a problem with the microphone in the building. A moment of silence has turned into a moment of recognition here for Willie Marshall as we get sent for tonight's Star Spangled Banner and National Anthem. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the Sadowski, I'm Zach Fish. Welcome to Hershey Bears Hockey on Fox 43. Antenna TV, 
as well as NBC Sports Washington Plus. The first period of Hershey Bears hockey is sponsored by Abel and Son Roofing and Siding. Hunter Shepard gets the start in goal for Hershey as Todd Nelson's squad looking for some offense. And Todd Shepard will have to be good, but the Bears have to find a way to beat Joey Decord. He's been a wall. He's played them all. They'll have to beat him tonight. They want to do it early. Yes, definitely. I made reference to the fact that the zero that the Bears put up in Coachella Valley is more concerning than the five and the four. Some of the play dictating that, of course, all those penalties in game two when you're shorthanded for one entire period. That's going to cause, there's a cause and effect there. But yeah, they have got to find a way to get one in the net and get this crowd involved and keep them there. Ready to roar in Chocolate Town, the Calder Cup Finals, as they should be back in the sweetest place on earth. The puck is down. Game three is underway. The Bears look to get back in the series. Bears and Firebirds in Chocolate Town, USA. Puck shot off the back glass. Mike Vecchioni looking to go to work offensively. A huge hit. The Bears have the puck. Borgstrom shotgun block. And Day can't find it. It comes back to center, where Ty Cartier will get it. Hershey laying the boom early. Dan Bilesma, the head coach of the Firebirds, previously in Wilkes-Barre Sprint, said his team better be ready for this. It is a whole different atmosphere. He knows it well. Shot in behind the Bears' net. Nash hit hard by Karche, but the whistle went in offside. Called on Coachella Valley as we introduce you to our officials. Justin Key, number 44, and Carter Sandlack, number 47. The referees, they'll call the penalties. Mitchell Hunt, number 62, and Joseph Mahone, number 89 on the lines. And officiating will be interesting to see. Game one, it appeared like it was the rest of the playoffs. Game two was called much more tightly. And Todd Nelson said he talked to the officiating supervisors, and that was what he was told would be the standard going forward. Bears will have to adjust to that. Well, they got to recognize what it's going to be and recognize it earlier because you can't keep yourself in the box that much in game two. And you got to take advantage of it. And they're introducing themselves to the giant center board, Zach. Coming out physical. McElrath trying to throw a hint coming off 18 penalty minutes. Ponderalski got out of the way. The Bears had nine penalty kills in game number two, the most of the playoffs this year. Shot on Shepard makes the game's first save with his blocker. Firebird center Ponderalski sprawling save by Shepard. He darted out, made the stop on the two-time Calder Cup champion. Got a clean look at him. Hunters with some good vision early on. Good first shift for the Bears, but it's the Firebirds with possession now. Their captain, Max McCormick, who leads the playoffs with 12 goals. It's the Pikin offensively, but Sam Annis with it for the Bears. To center right, Johansson will lead the charge. Over the blue line, left wing to Protus. Back to Johansson to the end of the backhand. Stick save to court. He doesn't know where it is. It goes to the corner. And the Bears with their first chance to core in a quality save. Alex True to center, swung at by Hershey in the chocolate sweaters with cream and white accents. The Firebirds steal and look to center, thrown to the goal, smacked on net. And Iorio is there to wrangle it away. Fans behind their club as the Bears rush to center. Hendricks Lapierre over the blue line along the left wing. Spins into pressure. Two men are there in white as the Firebirds break the press to center, but the Bears take it right back. Lop here by himself will allow his team to change. Two minutes in, and the start has been electric and as advertised. Last two rushes as well. The defense getting involved offensively. Johansson and Iorio both not hesitating to go all the way in to the Bears' offensive zone. Two good scenes by Shepard. That stop on Ponorowski was a real good one. And Andrew Ponorowski in the playoffs. Now up to three goals. And here's a look at the chance for the Firebirds again. The puck comes out. Great pass from Cameron Hughes and Ponderalski. Got Shepard moving. Sprawl, but made the save. Center on the face off. The Bears' fourth line reunites Mesa Morelli and Beck Valenstein. Center thrown from the draw. Morelli back on this line for the second consecutive game. He had moved up to the top line. And this line was so good for Hershey, they will keep them together. Well, he'll have to take a draw on the battle of the 11s. Finally, the puck is down. Fans getting antsy as the Bears take the draw. Logan Day at the right point. Could not get it through traffic. Broke the stick of Cole into the process. But here come the Firebirds left wing. Paganski leaves it. Shot on goal and a good save by Shepard on the former Bear, Eddie Wetkoff. Sprawled out to his left. Falling down once again, but he's got it in his mitt. Well, we know what kind of shot Eddie Witko has. A quick snap wrister right there. And... Hunter Shepard sees it the whole way, snags it with the mitt. Whitco, who had his first goal as a bear, believe it or not, in Joey Decord, his goaltender now, his professional debut back in 2019 against the Bears. Decord won here for Belleville, the only goal scorer on him for Hershey that night. 
was Andy Whitcomb. It was his first as a Bear, but DeCord got the win, and now those two are teammates and foes of Hershey. Oh, no! uh, cleared all the way down to the aforementioned DeCord, who plays the puck on the right wing. He's 2-0 in his career at Giant Center. 3-0 in four appearances against Hershey prior to game number one in two of the Calder Cup Finals. Bears did get to him once last April. He was yanked. Three goals on 11 shots in Charlotte. And he's a member of the Checkers. Allen Stein knocked down away from the Plexi in game two. That would have been called. Mackelrath with a big hit. But here's Shane Wright on the right wing with a snapshot. Wide to Shepard. And clear to the left point. Olison will hold it in. Smacks it off the backboards. Mackelrath to retrieve it. Gets just a piece of it. But Riley Sutter will slow it down with three minutes gone in period one. 0-0 here at Giant Center in game three. Defense does a nice job taking their time, getting it out of the zone cleanly. That's going to be imperative for those guys. Saucer pass to center. Vinny Iorio back in the lineup for the second consecutive game. He missed five games with an injury. Nice move. Lucas Johansson starts the offense to center. Henrik Borgstrom down the right wing to Frank to the net. Broken out to the far corner. Vecchioni plays it back to the point. Vinny Iorio, tough pass to handle for Frank. Crunch through the boards was Vecchioni. Allows the Firebirds to gain some traction to center with rookie Ty Karche, the HL's Rookie of the Year. Long shot punched out by the blocker of Shepard. Another save by the Hershey keeper is fourth of the game. Shots are 4-1 in the early moments to the visitors. Yeah, and the Firebirds are not hesitating. They're just taking aim and firing right at Hunter Shepard, hoping somebody else is going to be there if he handles the initial shot. Cella Valley only had 23 shots in game number two. Here's Hughes down the left wing, who had a goal in that contest. That pass to the net got blocked. Logan Day breaks it up to Connor McMichael. To center ice, Nash tries to join the rush. That's thwarted. The Bears try it again with Garrett Pilon. Three wide over the blue line. Feeds it far side, no one home. Snidely shuffles it behind the net. And a Pilon near side corner. He'll dip it around the perimeter again. And around and around we go with Nassau to keep it. With four minutes and 20 seconds gone in period one, the Firebirds to center. And Coachella Valley with it to Hughes. He'll turn on back. Whitco to center, hit by Pilon. He'll jump it in. And Shepard to play it behind the goal. It was stuck at his feet. But calmly to Logan Day and the Bears to center as McMichael got it out of the way of the hit and cleared it down the ice. DeCord will handle the puck anytime he gets the chance. He does there. And the Firebirds break to center where Alexei Protis plays it forward. Tannis will flip it in. Now the retrieval process starts. Bop here behind the goal. Going to check, knocking the puck away from Olofsson. The Bears center broken up. And the Firebirds to safety. Everything there but the execution again for Hershey as it's cleared defensively. A couple of no-look passes in the offensive zone end up coming up empty. The center ice, it's Riker Evans in his own zone. A goal and assist for Evans in game number two. Turned over to Lop here at center ice, weaving and winding his way over the checker red line. Does not get the puck deep. But the Firebirds turn it back in their own end to Evans to center. Well, the defenseman can scoot over the blue line, looking to the middle of the ice, the attacking territory. Lapierre steals again. Chucks it as far as the red line, but Austin Paganski takes it back. Step on the far wing. Iorio able to close on him. Puck spit out to Rafferty. Centers in front to Rinsky. Down low comes loose. Right denied. A sliding save by Shepard. And his best stop of the game. There's to center to Morelli. Hershey's passing just a bit off the mark here. What a stop on Shane Wright by Hunter Shepard. It looked like he had the top half of the net open. Pass it center to Malenstein. Bears regroup over the blue line left wing. Malenstein rumbling on down. Wraps it to the net. It's loose in the blue paint. It squirts to the corner. After it is center with the Firebirds able to take and break free to center. Not a bad idea by Beck Malenstein with the man in front to try and stuff it home. Clock continues to move. Free-flowing first period. Cartier over the blue line. Gets a piece of the shot. Deflects it wide, but Day is able to dispossess him. Vecchioni to Nest to center. Indirect feed for Frank. Using his speed to try to get there, but icing is called. Fans disagree with it. It was awfully close. A race to the dots. Frank tried to get inside position, but just barely beat. 13-29 to go in the first period. We get a look at that save by Shepard. Look at this stop here on Shane Wright. Oh, Shepard exploding over. Wright thought he could tuck it inside the balls. Yeah, you mentioned it exploded right over. And I talked about his vision so far in the game. Look, he's keeping his eyes on everything. He knows where he's at. He's got good position. And he gets himself just in front, makes himself as big as he possibly can and as wide as he can, and bats it away. There's an issue with the glass here at Giant Center. So we may have to step aside here while they work on that. Oh. 
see if the ice crew does a great job here, and they've been called upon. The Bears have an older-style glass system that will eventually have to be replaced here at Giants Center. The HL works with the teams on this. You can see there Dan Strawhacker, who has been with the Bears and Hershey Entertainment Resorts for a long time and does about everything from working over at Hershey Park when he's needed in August to help out to running the operations here at Giant Center and making sure everything works smoothly. He is one of the behind-the-scenes heroes, and he's working with the ice crew and making sure that we're set. We're going to send it down to Andrew Callista, who is downstairs. Let's check in with him. Joining us for the first time tonight, Ice Side. Hi, Andrew. It was 13 years ago tomorrow that the Hershey Bears won their last Calder Cup. And if people take a look up to the Raptors here at Giants Center, well, they made it to the finals in 2016, but that is where they were swept against Lake Erie. You got to go all the way back to game six of the 2010 finals for Hershey's last win. As you mentioned at the top of the broadcast, Hershey lost games one and two here at Giants Center and then won four straight, three of them on the road down in Texas. And game six on home ice, June 14th, 2010, when the club's 11th Calder Cup. Now, the man that lifted that trophy is in the building as team captain, Brian Helmer. He watches from the team suite, hoping he could lead this team to a similar comeback, guys. Thank you very much, Andrew. The ice crew has the glass situation rectified and some good looking. Great memories from 2010. So Bears look to replicate that. They were down 0-2 in that series, as Andrew mentioned. Both flashes coming at home. They were booed off the ice here at Giant Center after game two. <laughs> and then won it in game six. Heroes forever. Left wing, Ethan Frank to the slot. Vecchioni trying to give it back. And taken away by the Firebirds. Vecchioni saw he was closed upon. Frank would have been open. But the pass didn't make it through. 0-0. Zero, zero, seven minutes gone in period one. And on the near side, boys. Puck to the net front. Blocked away. And Vecchioni to center. Looking for some help. McElrath stepping into the play on the fourth check. Chasing it down behind the goal. Throwing a heavy hit. As the Bears captain in deep and unfamiliar territory. Michael at center will smash it back. Shots are 5 2 in favor of the Firebirds. Decord, well, confident with his stick handling back behind the goal as the puck comes back out to center. It's Snively with it to Iorio. And icing going to be called here on the Bears. Just a little bit of example. I've liked a lot, Todd, about Hershey's game in this one despite being outshot, but. The passing is just not quite crisp and on the mark. Had it been, I think the Bears would have had a little more quality opportunities. Well, in games one and two, we're on the West Coast. I'm sure a lot of viewers, a lot of people in the building haven't seen the, the Firebirds. It's my first live look at them, and you think, oh, how good are they? 4 -0, 5 -0. Well, you can see they are precise, they are fast, and you had better be clean with your passing or they're going to turn you over and come back the other way. True on the faceoff for Coachella Valley, bested by Hershey's Connor McMichael. Snively to center ice. And knocked away with Garrett Pilon looking to track it down far corner. Pilon with the steal. He gets stripped out. Arm stays down. And the Firebirds with it along the near wing. McCormick to look to take to center ice. Iorio with it gets a piece of it and knocks it forward. Coachella Valley's Olufsen in his own zone. Fires the red line where the Bears shoot it back in and make a line change with everyone except Joe Snively. Gustav Olison to center ice. Good steal by Snively at center. Here come the Bears. Two on one, maybe. Snively down the left wing, trying to throw it in front off the skate of Tennyson, who bailed out his teammate there. Olison, a little too casual with it. Snively just picked his pocket. Well, that's the kind of effort it's going to take. Look, they've only scored twice in the last 12 periods of playoff hockey. It's going to take some excellent individual efforts and then finishing off a play. Snively makes it happen with the turnover but isn't able to get the puck over to Annis, who was sitting in front. And that's just the frustrating part, is you, you get something cooking, you get something good going, and you just can't finish off the play. This game 16 of the playoffs, hard to believe the Bears have only scored five goals in the first period in the Calder Cup playoffs after as good as they were in the regular season. Both centers thrown out of the draw. Protus in there to take it. No, they're going to say Lynn can stay. Draw is taken by the Firebirds and Olison behind the net. Well, smash it up the near boards. Past Aaron Ness and all the way down. Should be another icing. And it is. And a draw coming up in the defensive zone for the Bears, or excuse me, for the Firebirds. Zach, we've seen this same situation, though, a lot this year, even though they haven't put the puck in the net yet here in the first period. Hunter Shepard, sharp early, keeping them in the game, allowing the offense to find the time to get some rhythm and to get something going against their opponent. 
So far, we've seen Mitchell Hunt and Joseph Mahone have a hard time getting the finger face offs from the guys. Draw one by the Bears. Someone's lost a glove in the far corner as it skips away from Anis behind the net. A clear to the blue line. Glove down by Protus and capped in. He'll skate it to the near wing. Would have been a hand pass, so Protus had to take it. His teammates couldn't. He'll rag it back to the point, but that pass handcuffs Day. And look out, here come the Firebirds. Lynn will lead the charge over the blue line down the slot. A shot off the chest protector of Shepard. Makes the save, and the Bears clear it. But again, a pass that is off the mark for Morelli and fired in behind the Bears' net. Nice job by the defense to pinch them off, pinch off the forward so they can't clean up any kind of rebounds. Nass will peel on back in his own zone. Under 11 minutes left of the first period. 0-0. 0-0 after one. In Coachella Valley, they exploded for four in the second period. Bears fans getting behind their club as Nass awaits in his own zone. Ahead to center ice. Morelli cannot get the puck deep. Pops the tape of right, though. The fourth overall pick of the Seattle Kraken and a goal of the NHL this year. Played all over the place. Center to center. Taps it left wing. Again, the Bears can't get it deep. Austin Paganski with it to neutral ice. On the left wing, McElrath wins the battle against Torinsky. Seen this ice many times as a member of Lehigh Valley. There's up the middle. Dangerous pass, but McElrath to handle between the legs of Malenstein and worked in offensively. But not for long as the Firebirds regroup. Yeah, they were fortunate with that pass. Wright was right there. Could have picked it off. Shella Valley to center. Bad pass there. Picked off Eccione. Left wing to Frank. To the middle for Borgstrom. And that comes loose to Borgstrom again in the right circle. Feeds it to the point. Johansson shot to the net. Wide of the goal. Hershey stuck on just two shots. And right now, they're just not tape to tape, which is preventing them from getting those great A's. Borgstrom trying to change that. Rushes in over the blue line, but the Bears are offside, and we will step aside. 9.42 to go in the first period. 0-0 at Giant Center. You're tuned in to the 2023 Calder Cup Final. The GMC Sierra with hands-free driving. It rocks. Or did 0.9% APR plus over 1,200 trade assistance and no monthly payments for 90 days on Sierra 5.3 liter V8 light duty models. I'll see y'all. Sports Washington, your home of the Washington Capitals. Let's go, Cats! Welcome back to Hershey Bears Hockey, the 2023 Calder Cup Finals. With John Sadowski, I'm Zach Fish, and Albert, our producer alongside. Three cheers to the great same production crew. That's a great job here in the building and on our broadcast at Giant Center. 0-0 zero, zero. is Aaron Nassel on the left wing here in game three. Trying to get the Bears back in the series. Love to get one here in the first period. Put that monkey off the back on Joey Decord. Just two shots will not work for that thus far in this game. And Marcus. the crowd is ready, Zach. I mean, they're ready to explode. They had a party on the plaza before the game, and they're they're juiced up and ready, ready to go. Pilon on the right wing, cross ring. Gets the puck to Snidely. The Bears are off the side with 9-10 to go in the first period. And a neutral zone face-off to come. So, Chella Valley with the better of the opportunities in the early moments so far. Hunter Shepard has made six saves to keep this a 0-0 game. But as a goaltender, there's a fine line already. But when your team is scoring nothing, that is all the pressure in the world on you to keep it 0-0. Yeah, Hunter knows what he's dealing with back there. And 
He's, he's been there before. We've talked about this for the team. He's kept the team in it early on. They've had the better options, but you know, no one's really had a lot of possession time offensively. It's kind of the quick rush down, get a shot off, clean up the rebound, and, and get him out of there. So they haven't had a lot of controlled time in the Bears zone, and neither have Hershey on the other side. Another throw out in the faceoff results in McMichael winning the draw for Hershey back to Gabriel Carlson in his own zone to McElrath. And a pair all year has to peel on down the ice. The Bears just aren't very crisp right now. The draw coming up their defensive zone. Another icing on a misconnection for Hershey. And wonder if they're just playing their stick script a little too tight right now. Well, that's entirely possible. They they know what's at stake. They know there's a lot of eyeballs on what they're doing. Watching every move. Draw on the right of Shepard. Tied up off the face off. Carlson with it for Hershey. Wheels it around the boards and Snively down the ice again. Another icing on the chocolate and white. Bears will be back home for game four. We know that will occur regardless of the result of this one. That will be Thursday. Limited seats are available. Visit HersheyBears.com to snag yours. If you can't make it, we'll have it on Fox 43, the main channel, as well as on NBC Sports Washington. And Saturday, if necessary, tickets are available. Snag yours for a potential game five that the Bears are going to need to make necessary. Their Calder Cup dreams and hopes will stay alive. We're a long way from that. Firebirds split the defense with a face-off win that diverts back to center. They re-engage over the blue line on the right wing. Max McCormick with the punt. Remember him from his Binghamton Senators days. Also played in Charlotte last year. To the right wing to Jimmy Schultz behind the net. Lynn takes it out of the far corner. Watch there by McMichael. Sticks to him and does a good job. On the far wing, it's back though to True. To the point, Schultz wrist shot in front of Shepard. Sails wide of the goal. The Bears do a good job keeping the front of the net clog. And clear to the line, and McMichael to take it. Sends it far wing. All they can do is tip it in because they need a line change. Hershey with fresh legs on with a 10 left of the scoreless first period. Really nice job by Connor McMichael to be physical and tough in front of the net. Steal by Protus over the blue line right wing. Shot got blocked, did not get through. He had traffic to the net. Right idea. Just couldn't get it past the wave of defenders. Tell Valley's giving it up at the red line, trying to pass it through, neutralize a couple times. That was another example of it. Here's resulting in a rush, but nothing on Decord, who's just faced the two shots. Hannes trying to change that to center ice. Stolen away, smacked back in by the Firebirds. Shepard will slow it off the back of his leg. Iorio runs into trouble, but plays it to a safe helping hand of a Lexay Pronix. To center ice, the Bears over the blue line. Iorio down the right wing, he'll shoot right into the glove of Decord. And knocked down in front of the net. Might get a penalty call on Coachella Valley here. We'll see. Hannes was dumped. I think the Bears are getting the power play when we return. 7.28 to go on the first. Hershey the man advantage. Back after this, you're tuned in to the Calder Cup playoffs. The NBA 2K League is here, and you can catch the best NBA 2K players in the world live and in person at District E. Watch as the top 16 teams in the NBA 2K League face off in the tip-off tournament, the first of three five-on-five tournaments in the NBA 2K League's Banner Chain Series, where the winners will walk away with $250,000 in prize money. Catch the eSports action in person at District E, June 14th through the 17th. You can't manage what you don't measure. Knowing your risk is an easy first step in preventing cardiovascular disease. Talk to your health care provider today. Brought to you by Sheehy Auto Stores during our Sheehy Has Heart sales event to benefit the American Heart Association and to make living a heart-healthy life easier. Turn down the outside noise with Sound Shield. This is more than a window. It's peace and quiet. Hear the difference with Thompson Creek's exclusive Sound Shield windows, filtering out 35% more noise than our standard double pane windows. And call right now to save 40%. Buy one, get one 40% off all Sound Shield windows. Hear the difference with Sound Shield. Call 855 57 Creek. Everyone's a winner at MGM National Harbor with our three team parlay of food, drinks, and sports. Find out more about our immersive sports experience at MGMNationalHarbor.com. It's guaranteed to be monumental. 
Hey, I'm Matt Adams, host of the Fairways of Life show, and you can catch us every week right here on NBC Sports Washington. If it happens in the game of golf, we'll take you inside the ropes. John Hayden sits for roughing after the whistle. Knocked down a bear. Sam Annis, Hershey, the power play. Number six in this series. Eight for 43 in the playoffs. 18.6%. The 0-0 game. Chance to go up at home. And for about the 10th time here in the first 12 minutes and change, we have an unfair faceoff. Particularly linesman Joseph Mahone has been very particular with the number of official supervisors that are in the building. These guys want to get it right. They're auditioning for the NHL, too. Morelli going to have to come in and take the draw instead as they check the clock here. Zach, Zach, I like seeing Vincent Iorio involved in, in it offensively. You've seen that a lot already from the defenseman getting involved. And, of course, we love seeing a Firebird in the box to see what they can do on the power play here. Penalty kill for Coachella Valley, seventh in the AHL in the playoffs at 82.8%. Puck is down. The Bears win the draw. They go to work on the pillar out power play. Snidely with it to the goal line. Morelli gets to cord moving, shoots it into his pad, trying to take the secondary shot. Cleared off the glove of Joe Snidely and down the ice. McMichael will collect it. He was worried it might be a hand pass there. He's going to go get it as the referee weighs it off. Mike Vecchioni with it to center. Hasn't been on the board since the Hartford series. I feel that's going to change tonight. The Bears have success. And he is a catalyst for this team offensively. Cleared past McMichael to center ice as the Bears will have to regroup to neutral. Vecchioni regroups in his own zone. McMichael along the left wing. Henrik Borgstrom with it will shoot it on in. He's connected in the playoffs. The power play to Cord can handle it well. He'll fire it up and out of play. Did that go out? That should be a delay of game penalty. And it is. DeCord shot it up and out of play. It's a five on three for Hershey. The officials are going to confer, but the call on the ice was delay a game. The officials are huddling here. DeCord thought it was tipped. No, they can it was tipped. No penalty. And this building's going to erupt here. Here's a look at it. Yeah, it was. That's the right call. You saw it nick off the top of the glass there from that vantage point, Todd. Yeah. Just in the little right corner, we can see it. Well, DeCord got lucky. I he mean, did. He that's is... that's really rolling the dice there. DeCord handles the puck very, very well, no doubt. But that time there, he got lucky, and the Bears just five on four. Officials did make the right call. And it's across. Left wing. Frank will shoot. It's gone! And Frank, from that familiar left side, 30 goals in the regular season. He's been fantastic all season long. DeCourt doesn't give him a lot of room, but he gives him just enough room. The building explodes, and this is the formula. Get in front. Keep the crowd into the game. What a shot by Frank, his first of the postseason. He led the team in the regular season with nine on the power play. Annis and Day assist. It's 1-0. Hershey. Olafson with it on the left wing, a shot deflected wide to Shepard, can't give one up right away. The Bears connect to Cord, finally beaten. And now let's see if the Bears parlay into something more. The defense there, the penalty to Hayden, cost the Firebirds, undisciplined. He sits the Bears strike. Lop here with it to center right, flings it far away. Protus was ready to skate along the left side, but broken up and never made it to him. Stolen by the Bears at center for a moment. Firebirds turn it back in their own zone. Give Ethan Frank so much credit. He's been in and out of the lineup. He's really, really been trying hard. He knows what kind of scorer he is, and he finally, finally delivers. I have to imagine he's a guy that gets one. The floodgates hopefully will open. Puck cleared back behind the net. Bears after it. Look to dig it free, and they'll take it to center. Along the left wing, knocked in, back behind the net. Riley Sutter after it. Big hit in the far corner. This plank's going nuts. On the announcement of the Frank goal, 30 in the regular season on the all-rookie team. Great time to get it going. Not cleared back behind the end along the near wing. McElrath ahead to center, or at least wanted to get it there, and sent back behind the goal. 
Well, Gabriel Carlson went, this is as loud as we've heard Giants center all playoffs. On the near wing, Paganski. Flings it on in deep, behind the net. To the far corner, Morelli after it, digs it free, hit hard. There's clear to the line and not out. They're striking first, Hershey when they score first in the playoffs. Six and one. So a good omen here. You can see it's really lifted up the guys. They're finishing every play with a check. Whether it's hitting them hard or not, they're at least getting in their way. But cleared along the left wing. The Bears with it behind the net. It's picked up by Logan Day, who looks up the middle. Tried to hit Frank. That pass too far. Firebirds turn it back around, shooting the Bears 7 to 5. They've had some quality chances. But Hershey connecting on the lone man advantage so far. Up along the left wing. Karche over the blue line. He can gun it too. A right pad saved by Shepard. Kicked the link pad out and knocked it away. Came to the point. Schultz to the goal. Deflected high and wide and out of play. Ethan Frank connects for Hershey. And the Bears on the board for the first time in the Calder Cup playoffs. one nothing for the chocolate and white. You're tuned in to Hershey Bears hockey. York Mitsubishi. Designed for adventure. With Toyota reliability, the new RAV4 is everything you're looking for. While crafting a new era for user experience. Right now, get 3.99% APR on a new RAV4. Adventure is what you make of it. Toyota, let's go places. My grandfather was a Ukrainian immigrant. He lived in this DC row house and owned a tailor shop. My father managed a toy store down the street after he returned from World War II. They both loved the Washington region and taught me to serve our community. That's why my law firm, Greenberg and Betterman, has helped thousands of people in the District, Maryland, and Virginia for over 35 years. We're here to help you, our neighbors and friends, as we have done with care for so long. Greenberg and Betterman, contact us. Feel better. If you need $750 or $1,500 up to $3,000, just go to WeFixMoney.com and get the money you need as soon as tomorrow. WeFixMoney.com is free to use and available 24-7, and you don't need perfect credit. Go to WeFixMoney.com right now, and we'll guarantee that in two minutes, you'll find out if you're approved for a loan of up to $3,000, money you could get by tomorrow. Go to WeFixMoney.com. Wizards coverage starts here. Chris and Drew take you inside the game, while the crew and I give you exclusive access to the team. NBC Sports Washington is your home of the Wizards. Ethan Frank has the Bears ahead 1-0. A power play goal for Hershey, and they have the lead here tonight. They are striking first for the first time in the playoffs. Striking first for the first time in the playoffs. Finally on the board. First goal for Hershey since Dustin Gaisley scored a long, long time ago in Game 3, 2016, in Cleveland. Absolutely love Ethan's reaction, too. Just the sense of relief that went pouring out of him. Elon over the blue line. Gabriel Sock Carlson can't get it. Snively well threw it in front. Pass got blocked. Firebirds nearly give it away. True, though, is big and strong. Fended off McMichael as the puck is dumped behind the Hershey net. Left side boards, knocked away by Garrett Pilon. Hacked at, takes it up the left flank and looks to clear it. Johansson behind the net to Carlson, who looks up the middle. Feeds Connor McMichael, sidesteps that, his pass deflected away. Good stick by McCormick. Bears get it back. Pilon over the blue line. Tried to flip it across to the late man, LaPierre. Well, that did not work. Bears are just a little more on with their feeds. They will be off and running quite a bit here. Coachella Valley's popping up the puck as Hershey is offside and oh is there too many skaters on the ice here who's this call on both teams are making changes we'll get in a moment but coming up in our first intermission report andrew calista will chat with the goal scorer ethan frank andrew and jim jones will give their thoughts on the first period todd and i will have your first period highlights that's all in our first intermission report coming up too many men on the ice was called it's going to be on the bears it appears here lop here going over to serve it so first power play for coachella valley see here if we can see it one, two, three, four, five bears, six. There's the one in the zone. Proof is in the pudding right there. Six skaters on the ice, so a mental mistake on the bench for Hershey. Yeah, those are the kind of unforced errors you just can't have out there. 
especially when you've taken the momentum in this game and you want to take it into the first intermission. So let's see what the, the power, the penalty killing unit can do. Face off one by the Firebirds to the point. It's across to Riker Evans. Coachella Valley with two power play goals in game number two. Good stick by Sutter to knock it to center. The Firebirds of the power play of the playoffs, 19.3%. They have it along the far wing. Sutter will poke it down to the point. Evans will hold it in. He had one of the two power play goals. Leaves up the right circle. Shot got blocked. Never made it to Shepard. McCormick has four power play goals in the playoffs of the net front. Evans fires shot. Clear to the left for Cole Lynn. 2.40 to go. Period one. Big kill for the Bears. Presented by Bokeh Mulligan to Mayo. Firebirds coughing up. Ness will clear it. Off the stick of Evans. Who takes it in his own blue line. He sends it far away. They bring in Gage over the blue line. Coachella Valley with possession. To venture on Andrew Ponorowski. Evans to Ponorowski. Away from him. Nestle clear to the line. Not out. Lynn with the last circle. Tips away from McMichael. In the corner. Everything to the perimeter. Well done by the Bears thus far. One minute gone on the power play. Lapierre serving the too many men on the ice minor. Throw to the net. Tip wide to Shepard. Cartier with the tip. But he missed the goal. Watch McCormick in front. It just keeps itching in front of Shepard, forcing him to hit him. Shot in front, knocked away. Ness to Malenstein. Time and space. Puck down all the way. Great kill by the Bears so far. Still 40 seconds to contend with in the closing blank 50 of the first period. Firebirds trying to answer the Bears' power play goal. Up the middle, tipped in wide of the Hershey Netter. Was it throwed and thought he got a stick on it? I did too, to be honest with you. But the linesmen say it's icing. See if they chat about this and move the draw to center. They're going to get together. Started to bounce all of a sudden. Yeah, they're going to put it at center. And I think, again, that's the right call. The two times the officials have gotten together, I think they've gotten it right. Well, it would be a huge penalty kill and just a huge boost in general to go into that intermission with the lead. Center off the draw will win it cleanly for Hershey. Cleared down behind his own net. Iorio with some time. Oh, got to get that puck out. He hit Hughes, and Coachella Valley takes it back. Here and there by the Bears rookie on the far wing. Clear to Schultz. Fireside half boards. 13 on the power play. Center point drive, and it winds up in the net. Rogan Rafferty with a slap shot and a puck that should have been out. It's 1-1. Oh, Vinny Iorio is just going to be kicking himself over that. He had a, had a chance to clear it all the time in the world and just I don't say he whiffed on it. He, he just you can see him shaking his head down there. Number six now. Got to get that cleared. He knows it. It costs him. Three shot. Shepard never saw it. Rafferty, second of the playoffs on the drive from the blue line. Beats the screen net minor. And both teams train power play goals. We're tied at one. In the closing 90 seconds of the period, you see the look from behind the net. Shepard never picked it up. And in the net it goes. And Vinny Ioro is going to be a really good one. Three games in the NHL this year. That's one that he will want back and is uncharacteristic for him. There's a reason he was drafted high and got called up this year. You know, he is going to definitely get that play what he wants the next time. Another icing called on the Bears. And well, and for the Firebirds, if you're going to put a screen in front of a goalie, he might as well be 6'5 and 200 pounds and with True standing right in the way. Draw coming up near the defensive zone to the right of Hunter Shepard. Here from Ethan Frank coming up on the other side of our break here in our intermission report. I'm sure a lot of relief for him as Todd Nelson looks on. Being outshot 10 to 5 and so quick the game can change right and Scotty Allen who's now an assistant coach with the Washington Capitals the Bears head coach last year always said it's a game of mistakes. It is a game of mistakes it's just such a fine fine line. Schultz picks up the helper as does Hughes. He's Cameron Hughes had some good production of the former Bruin. Hetman in the far corner after it. Able to knock the puck loose. Ness, oh, tired in the boards by Hayden. A lot of games in the NHL. He plays rough and tumble, but Ness always hops up. He does there. Vecchioni, left wing to McMichael. Knocks the puck down, takes it wide to Cole. Throw it to Vecchioni, and his feet spins and shoots, looking for a tip. Right point day, swinging a massive band on it. Center ice it goes. Good back check by the Bears. Pop the puck free with 35 seconds to play. And a draw here in period one, tied at one with both teams connecting on the power play. Great job by Vecchioni. It's not often you see a forward laying on the ice in the logo and knocking it away just to try and keep the other team from getting any kind of momentum. Steal at center, center in the air to Morelli. 
15 left of the period. Time for one last rush if the Bears want it. Carlson to McElrath. Looks at Faisal on the near wing. Mallon stop. Will tip it in. Center on the hunt. Behind the goal, Rafferty. Gets around the hit. Takes the puck to the corner. The Firebirds clear up the boards. The blue line. Carlson shot wide. And that's it for the first. Ethan Frank connects for his first to the playoffs. And the Bears first to the Calder Cup Finals. And we're tied at one in our intermission report. And a chat with the Bears goal scorer after this. You're tuned in to the 2023 Calder Cup Finals. Faulkner, Sue. This may look like an action-adventure movie, but it's a Nissan sales event ad. Things are heating up. Good thing this Rogue has the most standard safety features in its class. Our competitors can't say that. Now get a low $2.99 per month lease on Rogue. Hurry. These epic offers won't last forever. Even after 40 years serving our area, people still ask, what is a five-star technician? Well, it's simple. They're the best. When you're talking heating and air conditioning, they're professionally trained and the most knowledgeable in the business. For your plumbing or electrical needs, they can do it all. For pest control and home performance, trust me, you want a five-star technician at your home. For more than 40 years, Crop Metcalf, home of the five-star technician. Crop Metcalf is the one with five stars. Want to eat, bet, and cheer like a Caesar in the District of Caesars? I got a guy. Follow me. Specifically, this guy, Guy Fieri. And this is Guy Fieri's DC Kitchen and Bar. So pull up a seat, people, and get the royal treatment in Flavor Town. Feast your eyes on 18,000 square feet of wall to wall sports, wagering, and game day eats. Seven days a week. Y'all have what C's have. Eat, bet, and cheer like a season. Guy Fieri's DC Kitchen and Bar. Great to be with you. Here tonight, Giants center the 2023 Calder Cup Finals. Downstairs, the goal scorer, Ethan Frank. Thank you, Fish. We'll get right to Ethan. Easy question, man. How did it feel to get that playoff goal? Really good. Uh, it's been a long playoff run for me personally, but uh, nothing feels happier than helping the team get ahead, and we're just looking to do it again this period. You guys do get the jump. You go in at 1-1, but how important was it to grab an early lead here and you do it on the power plane, killing two birds with one stone? Yeah, for sure. We've been obviously struggling to get goals past this guy and uh, feels really good as a group um, and I always got to keep things rolling going the rest of the game. Hunter Shepard into this game early. How important was it for the bench to see him get shots early and to see him with the flow that he has here? Uh, it's huge. You know, he's he's our backbone. We see him doing well and working his butt off and we're just following suit. So, you know, he, he really sets a standard for hard work with us and uh, we just like to see what he does. How much fun is it being back on home ice and having this crowd behind you? Unbelievable. I don't know if it's been this loud all season, but it's unbelievable. We give them some taste of their medicine and uh, the OA ice isn't too fun to play on. All right, Ethan, I'll let you get back to the locker room. Thanks a lot, man. Right, thank you. You heard it. They love the roar behind them. When we come back, Jim Jones and I break down the first period action. You're watching Hershey Bears hockey here on Fox 43.2. The GMC Sierra with hands-free driving. Yeah, it runs. Or did 0.9% APR plus over 1,200 trade assistance and no monthly payments for 90 days on Sierra 5.3 liter V8 light duty models. At Amco, we've been fixing cars for almost 60 years. And over that time, a lot sure has changed. Cars have gotten more complex than ever. But the technicians at Amco have the expertise to fix anything. The problem is with your transmission valve body and torque converter. We do this all the time. So if your check engine light is on, let us take a look. Because we know cars inside and out. Double A, MCM. We love living and working in and around the nation's capital, a place that millions of people visit each year. But that means a lot of traffic, a lot of crashes, and unfortunately, a lot of injured people. That's why when someone breaks the safety rules and causes harm, we hold them accountable. We've been a part of this community for over 30 years. It's our home, and we want it safe. When injuries change your life, call the lawyers that care. Call Chase and Boscola, 1-800-728-5898. 
With Jiffy Lube MultiCare, it's our job to keep you moving. With a full range of services from oil changes and tires to brakes, batteries, and more, we've got what your car needs right when you need it. So you're ready for whatever's next. Putting you in the driver's seat of car care, that's a job for Jiffy. At Jiffy Lube, it's our job to make car care make sense. With personalized service reviews that swap the car talk for straight talk. So you know what your car is telling you and what to do about it. Putting you in the driver's seat of car care, that's a job for Jiffy. This is an adoption campaign, but it's not for me or Mr. Buttons or Frank over there. It's for you, humans. This is a call to humans to adopt our movement, to adopt our cause. This isn't just about saving one of us. It's about saving all of us. Thousands of lives every single day. It's about support for every one of us four, uh, and sometimes not four-legged best friends, waiting to meet a best friend of our own. With Best Friends Animal Society leading the charge. Shelter by shelter. City by city. We can save thousands of pets each day. Join us. Together we can save them all. District E at Capital One Arena is the new home for all things eSports and live entertainment here in the heart of D.C. Join us as we host eSports events along with pre- and post-game events to enhance the Capitals and Wizards game day experience. Whether it's watching Wizards DG contend for another NBA 2K League championship, hosting a private event, or grabbing drinks and food from District Bikes, District E has something for everyone. So come hang out. District E, powered by Ticketmaster. Welcome back to Hershey Bears Hockey here on Fox 43.2. Andrew Kalissa alongside uh, Hershey Bears legend Jim Jones. Jonesy, first question, it's an easy one. How important being down 0-2 in the series was that opening goal for the Chocolate and White? I think coming into the game, the Bears knew they had to score first. Keep the crowd in the game, 10,500 people in this building ready to blow the roof off. That's a huge goal to keep the momentum. And how about Hershey? been loud and it doesn't matter some elder statesmen in the crowd are getting loud and then you also have the young guys up against the glass four or five years old they're pounding the glass they're into this hockey game. it's great to see all the different kids here from all the different generations it's been passed down this tradition has gone on for years and years and years 11 calder cups people love it being here it's been fantastic to be in the building the beginning of the game huge start for the bears tough to give up that goal late in the first period we're tied at one a lot of good things in that period hunter shepherd they play discipline but they, they played a physical game as well and I think that's very important with two periods to go we've said it all postseason long if the Hershey Bears won Calder Cup number 12 they need to get Ethan Frank 30 goal scorer from the regular season engaged he is now fully engaged definitely you got to get a guy like him going Sam Annis gets the primary assist Logan Day who's played so well in the playoffs he gets a secondary assist that is big so you know looking ahead you got to get your best players and make them be your best players and I think Frankie getting going tonight is a big thing so you know a lot of good things in the first period 40 minutes of hockey left but you know what Kuchil is coming to play too that they're trying to win this they don't want to see the Bears back in this at all what does the Frank goal do for not only his psyche but the psyche as the team for the team as a whole well I think you know going all those periods without scoring you start to play a little bit tight you start to play a little bit nervous I think that gets the monkey off their back you play a little bit looser you let the guys kind of go play their game a little bit you know that's the biggest thing right now let them play Play Hershey Bears hockey. We talked about that at Aruga's the other night. When we play our game, nobody can beat us, and I think we showed that in the first period. Shout out to all the Bears fans that were at the watch parties through games one and two. You mentioned playing loose. Before that goal, the Bears not too sharp with the puck. How big was Hunter Shepard bailing them out? Shepard with a big kick save early, and he made a glove save probably two minutes, three minutes into the game. That kept the Bears in it. I don't think we wanted to see Cachilla score first. That's not what the Bears wanted to do tonight. So a lot of good things. Let's keep it going. 40 minutes of hockey left. What are you saying right now to the guys in the locker room for the next 20. I think if I'm Coach Nelson, I'm saying, hey, guys, you did what you were supposed to do. Keys of victory right now. We're up on the board by Zach Fish. We've done everything you asked. Just kind of play your game. Go have fun. Go have fun. That's the most important thing as well. But go 
go play some physical hockey, but let's go get a win. If they do that, they should get goal number two. When we come back here on Fox 43.2, Zach Fish and Todd Sadowski go through the first 20 minutes of highlights. You're watching Hershey Bears hockey here on Fox 43. Withers District Gaming season is heating up, and the two-time NBA 2K League champions have a new home here in Washington, D.C. at District E. WizDG's next home game features a rivalry matchup against Celtics Crossover Gaming, where the trash talk will be loud and play will be as intense as ever. Catch the best NBA 2K players in the world in action on June 24th at 4 p.m. at District E. Scan the QR code for your tickets. This right here is the extra-large New York-style pizza from Papa John's. And in order to make a big, tasty, extra-large New York-style pizza like this, you gotta really hand-stretch that fresh, never-frozen dough made from only six simple ingredients, like this. Woof! Look at that! That's what makes a Papa John's extra-large New York-style pizza Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza, but you knew that. Hi, I'm Katie from Long Roofing. For four generations, we've helped families just like yours bring beauty, value, and comfort to their homes. Our professional and customer-focused process will ensure that you protect your home for decades to come. Call now to get no payments and no interest for a full year, plus $1,500 off. Get your free estimate today, and you'll see we do roof replacement the right way, the long way. Isn't it time you got along? See it, love it, have it. At Marlowe Furniture, we have you covered. From the living room to the dining room to the bedrooms and more. Refresh, renew, make it you. With beautiful furniture that's so comfortable, you don't have to compromise. Look around. At Marlowe, you'll find a great selection of stylish, trend-setting looks to choose from in stock. No waiting. So go for it. Bring your style to life. Today at Marlowe Furniture, with the area's largest showrooms under one roof. Family-owned since 1955. Everyone knows that putting money aside in savings is really important. But then what? Should you keep your savings in a CD with a guaranteed rate or keep them liquid in a money market? Can your checking account help you save too? There's a savings combination that's right for your life and your budget. We'll help you build it. Let's talk about what saving looks like for you. Sandy Spring Bank. Harrisburg and WTKT HD, Fox Sports 1460. Welcome back to Hershey Bears Hockey on Fox 43 with Todd Sadowski. I'm Zach Fish. Our intermission report sees us deadlocked and a goal apiece here at Giant Center. Elsewhere, only one other hockey game going on. It's the National Hockey League. It's coming up at 8 o'clock tonight. The Vegas Golden Knights can win their first ever Stanley Cup as they take on the Florida Panthers. Chandler Stevenson, former Bear, of course, with Vegas. So we're watching that closely. But it really hit me here today. I was running around today with all the fun of the Calder Cup Finals like a chicken with my head cut off. Stopped and sat at this booth and looked down. All the rally towels on the seats. A great job done by our staff. Was outside today. You heard the screams and roars of the Hershey Park roller coasters. Beautiful day. It is June 13th, and we're still playing hockey here in yeah. Chocolate Town, USA. One of four pro teams playing. That's pretty darn special. No doubt about it. And you, you can't take that for granted, for sure, Zach. And, you know, we talked about this is the kind of team that's able to do that. We wouldn't be surprised if they advance this far. But you don't take it for granted. And I know, like I mentioned in the, before the game even started, when you sign up to say, hey, I want to come work for the Hershey Bears, be the voice of the Bears, this is the kind of stuff you expect to be able to call a Calder Cup game in Hershey, Pennsylvania. John Walton, the voice of the Capitals, who's joined us periodically on the road throughout the playoffs, chatting with him today. We did a video board segment in Arena here and just said, bring us some of that Calder Cup magic. <laughs> Four times he was in the finals in his nine years. They won three of them. And as we look at the highlights here from period number one, a lot of good for the Hershey Bears. They were outshot 10 to 5. Just thought they weren't as crisp as they would like, and the guys know that. They're going to look to shore it up a little bit. But finally, that man, Joey Decord, was beaten while Hunter Shepard on the other side of it made some real big saves for the Bears in the early moments. But, you know, this building was electric from the get-go, and the Bears had some chances, but Shepard was there as well. I like that Johansson was in there. We talked about the defenseman really getting involved on the offensive part of it. And before they really found the rhythm, look at these saves from Hunter Shepard. This is what he's been able to do all season long, is keep the team in it until they can strike. And there it is, Ethan Frank on the power play. Man, he's just got 
great speed and a wicked wrister, and he just beats the cord on the short side. And you see just a little bit of the Coachella Valley skating. Look at that relief on the bench. Everybody's <laughs> like, all right, here we go. We got one. Now let's get to our game plan. Everybody can stop talking about shutouts. And there's the goal that beat Shepard. The puck didn't get cleared. It comes to the blue line, and Rafferty guns one in. Shepard didn't get a good look at it. You see him lunging late with big Cole Lind in front. We head to the dressing room. And back for the second of moment as we look in our stats of the first period. 1-1, our score. We are even Steven. And you look at that, as Andrew alluded to earlier, the best home ice team in the regular season. So the Bears hoping to use some of that magic tonight. The big crowd to parlay themselves in a 2-1 series deficit. It's an entertaining first period. I mean, you look at these teams and you sit there and go, how did they lose 5-0 and 4-0? Well, there's some circumstances that led to that. But what we're seeing out on the ice tonight, this Hershey Bears team is just as good as that Coachella Valley Firebirds team. They can hang in it, but they need to play their hockey the rest of the way, try and get themselves back in front and lock it down. Peak here in the booth. You see the ice. It's ready to go. Puck drop of period two after this. 1-1. One, one. You're tuned in to the 2023 Calder Cup Finals. Fast. Get your best summer outfit and rep your favorite D.C. team at the same time. you got to check out the new Overtime Shop at Capital One Arena. It's your one-stop shop for everything Wizards, Caps, and Mystics. Open Tuesday to Friday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on 7th Street across from the Portrait Gallery. The selection is always being updated, so stop in throughout the summer for the latest styles and gear. Everyone's a winner at MGM National Harbor with our three-team parlay of food, drinks, and sports. Find out more about our immersive sports experience at MGMNationalHarbor.com. It's guaranteed to be monumental. Hello, innovation. Goodbye, injuries. Hello, science. Goodbye, seizures. Hello, tiny incisions. Goodbye, lengthy recoveries. At Children's National Hospital, we're making breakthroughs daily so we can say hello to a healthier future for kids. This is not the first all-electric car. That's because no BMW sees the road until it's reached the ultimate standard, our own. A standard that demands every BMW feels exactly like a BMW should. Unparalleled performance and precision handling made possible by electric engineering. But isn't that what you'd expect from the ultimate electric driving machine? Take advantage of financing as low as 2.99% and a $2,000 credit. Basketball season isn't over as the WNBA season is ramping up. The Mystics are loaded for another year and ready to make a statement. Make sure to catch all of the Mystics action here on NBC Sports Washington. If you need $750 or $1,500, up to $3,000, just go to WeFixMoney.com and get the money you need as soon as tomorrow. WeFixMoney.com is free to use and available 24-7, and you don't need perfect credit. Go to WeFixMoney.com right now, and we'll guarantee that in two minutes, you'll find out if you're approved for a loan of up to $3,000. Money you could get by tomorrow. Go to WeFixMoney.com. The second period of Hershey Bears hockey on Fox 43 is presented by Members First Federal Credit Union. Ready to go for the second period of play in Hershey, Pennsylvania. The Calder Cup Finals are back for the first time since 2016. And the Bears strike in period one for their first of the finals. Ethan Frank, and we're tied at one. Going into the second, the two teams switch sides. Up top, fifth floor press box with Tom Sadowski. I'm Zach Fish, producer Ed Albert alongside. Our entire technical great save productions crew with us as well. Crowd making noise, period two. Five on five hockey, we're underway here at Giant Center. Frank can't get the puck in offensively. It's taken away by Ville Pepin, who works it in down the left wing. The undrafted Finn Ford behind the net. Ron Francis, the general manager of the crack in the NHL affiliate of this Coachella Valley team. Liked his grit. Signed him as an unrestricted free agent, undrafted free agent this past summer. Lost his stick of the process. It's Frank behind the goal. Another undrafted free agent. Capitals inking him to an NHL contract next year. Skates to center. Leaves Mike Vecchioni. Left wing. He shoots right in the glove of Decord. He'll snatch it and hold it. The Bears' sixth shot on goal. Decord with the catch. And a face-off to his right as Vecchioni 
Got that puck maybe a little higher than he wanted, shooting for a rebound, possibly low off the pad. You mentioned Vecchione's name earlier in the broadcast. Certainly, we've talked a lot about Ethan Frank getting off the schneid, getting, on, getting one in net. I think, you know, Frank starts to fly around this place a little bit more, a little bit more tension drawn to him. We could get Vecchione going as well. Connor McMichael centering this line with Garrett Pilon and Joe Snively. This line we've seen a lot more production from, too. The forwards have to pick it up in this series, Zach. And center eye, Snively couldn't, oh, they say he did keep it in. He thought it was out of the zone. I thought it was, too. We're located right here on the blue line. He backed off, otherwise the Bears might have had a rush. Riker Evans will shoot the puck in. Firebirds left to right, the light sweaters. On the near boards, Hershey steals to center ice. Behind the defense, Snively down the left wing. Has a man joining Pilon to Snively in front. He scores! Joe Snively, his second in the playoffs. A gorgeous goal. 105 into the second. Hershey leads 2-1. to one. I'd say that's an example of what we were looking for. Snively and Pilon back and forth. And they hang on to it just long enough. Here's the pass right back to him, the give and go, and then it's the move to the backhand. That seals the deal on the play, and they got Joey Decord reeling here in Hershey. Decord is aggressive, as it gets. You see it there. It allows Snively to get him going laterally when Pilon gives it back. Decord down and out at that point. All Snively has to do is walk around him and elevate into the net. It's 2-1 Bears there in front, as they've got two here tonight. Early goal in period two. And they Joe. finally connect, Zach, with that pass up to Snively to allow that two-on-one break. Joe Snively, ton of assists, but his first goal in quite some time in the Calder Cup playoffs. So you got two guys that you need to get going because they're darn good hockey players. Snively's first goal since the 29th of April. And the Bears have the lead, 2-1 Hershey. Pilon and McMichael with the helpers. Talk about the offense coming up big. They are tonight. Can't give one up, though. True will rush in. Right wing, centering feed, left circle, shot across. Right shoulder saved by Shepard. That is a timely stop. Shepard checking his mask. It may have popped loose. Well, the butt cleared to center ice. And the Firebirds didn't waste any time answering, trying to come back and get in this thing. They are a team that can strike quickly offensively. Behind the net, Johansson bends off a hit. Iorio is there to shove it up the boards but kept in by the Firebirds. LaPierre there to help out, will kick it free to center. And Coachella Valley gave it away. Annis on the steal, rushes in offensively, leaves to Johansson, back to Annis, left circle, shoots off the outside of the goal post, trying to beat the court short side. He was a little late to get over there, but Annis wasn't in a shooting position. He was able to shuffle over and get a cover. Olsen the other way, tipped to the net front, off the arm of Shepard, and wide of the net. Real good rush by Hershey, created by Sam Annis on the steal. Up the far wing, the Bears to center. It's LaPierre with 2-1 Hershey. Hendricks LaPierre over the blue line to Alexei Protis to the goal. Off the skate, LaPierre behind the net. A soft pass that Olison ran and picked off. And the Firebirds clear to center. Sam Annis, the guy that can be a catalyst for the Bears. A real good look there for him and company. Steal at center ice. Good stick there by Hershey's Borgstrom. Over the blue line, on the right wing, leads to Day. That handcuffed him, but he counts it in deep. Vecchione retrieves it. Bears looking to go up by two. Vecchione the point. Aaron Ness to Mike Vecchione. On the left wing, swings it to the net. Did make it through traffic. Kept in by Day. Right point to the net, looking for a tip wide. It goes all the way to the left point. Ness scampering over, holds it in. Good work by the Bears here. Was broken up by the Firebirds, not cleared. Kept into the blue line like a pinball flipper. Logan Day with the stick. On the far wing, good work, Borgstrom. Magic Man steals it, right wing. A shot to the net from Frank, got blocked and knocked away. Great work by the Bears in the offensive zone. Cartier will finally get it to Pepin to skate to center. But the Bears are coming on here. We're starting to see a lot of life out of the forwards on offense and on defense. The center ice, four minutes gone, second period. Hunt dumped in behind the net, McMichael. Looking to track it down for Hershey. Here, Borns. Joe Snively unable to come up with it, but Pilon overlaps and takes it away on the reload. Far away. Iorio will rush in. Leaves for Connor McMichael. Far side, pulls up, trying to find some space. Iorio holds in right point and fires high and wide to the glove of Decord. Off the glass to Gabriel Carlson. On the left wing, evades a hit. Good work by Gabriel. 
Here's go top side. They got the cycle game going. McMichael's wrist shot. Line to cord, looking for some help. Elon from across the ring gets to it first. And the Bears are hungry on pucks here. Firebird is clear out to center. But Hershey all over Coachella Valley after the Snively goal. Michael to Snively. Over the blue line, right wing, Pilon. Dumps it in. Evans tried to hit him and ran into a brick wall there. Gotta love the first five minutes from the Bears, Todd. They're up by a goal. They have come out with a lot of energy. The Snively goal has taken it to the next level. It's starting to be contagious with these forwards. They know they need to get involved. Icing called on Coachella Valley as the Bears have come out flying here in period two. Listen to the crowd. They love it. This is what you want. Play in front. Andrew Calista is downstairs. Let's check in with him. What's up, Fisher? We've already seen Frankie and Snively get on the board. Next up, possibly Hershey forward Sam Annis. He's been one of the Hershey Bears' best throughout the playoff. In game two, didn't have much ice time with all the penalty kill. We'll see how that goes tonight. But also, you want to keep guys like Annis on the ice. The forward made it all the way to the Calder Cup Finals last year with Springfield as we take a look at the action going on. But his Thunderbirds are the Chicago Wolves. Annis is looking for a little bit of redemption here in this Calder Cup Finals. And you know what? Game three looking good right now with the Bears up 2-1. to one. Thank you very much, Andrew. Yeah, Annis and that third line have been involved. There's a look at Sam on the bench. Went all the way last year with Springfield. They won game one, but Andrew Ponorowski in Chicago came back with four in a row to win the Calder Cup. The Wolves going independent next year. They will not have an NHL affiliate. And they named Bob Nardella their head coach today, the dad of Hershey's, the father of Hershey's, Bobby Nardella. A shot in on net. Shepard will glove it and hold it and hang on. And a faceoff deep in the Bears zone. Hershey in front, 2-1 here at an electric giant center tonight. You know, and Andrew talked about Sam Annis. And if you're going to watch for him to beat somebody down the ice with blazing speed. That's not what, what's going to happen. That's not his game. Number seven has phenomenal touch. He's a finesse player who can set up a play or finish a play. He's, when he's in tight, he can find windows that other players don't see. If you can get him near the net with someone else, it turns into really, really good things for Sam Ennis, number seven. A given goal from Pilon and Snively. Has the Bears ahead. Two to one. Shots 12-9 Firebirds. The puck back to center. It's McCormick with it. Or to board feed to Eddie Wetko. Shot it in back behind the net. It's Gabriel Carlson with it. Fireside corner. Chucks it around along the near wing. Protis looks to get it to center. Caps it ahead on the tape of Anders. Over the blue line, left wing to the net. He shoots right in the breadbasket of Decord. Run into rather pedestrianly, and that will draw a crowd in front. All these guys want to get involved. They know it's been a long time since they've been able to put one in the net. Just look at the replay. Annis putting it on goal. Good work by Hershey crashing the net. Has led the league in scoring. You don't have that kind of instinct and, and not put some points on the score sheet. Waited the extra half second to get somebody in front. Draw to the right of DeCorin. Bears 10th shot on goal. We'll see Faceoff come outside the zone. Bears bench arguing that. As the defenseman got involved in the scrum after they moved the draw out to neutral ice. Zach Kukali had words with the linesman there and was advocating for a faceoff in the Coachella Valley defensive end. But we play on instead for the 2-1 Hershey Lee. Rodis behind the net. Half of the puck will track it down. Poked away by Olufsen. Fireboards. Iorio battling. His stick goes flying up in the air like a boomerang. And the puck shot up out to center ice. Iorio wants to try to get a change. Logan Day will jump on in his place and tip the puck in behind the net. Rodis with the left wing. LaPierre, one on four, will get there first. Sends it to the point. Frank across. Blue line drive. Deflected up and out of play into the safety net. But the Bears in front. 2-1. A give and go. Snively connects. 2-1 Hershey back after this. You're tuned in to the 2023 Calder Cup Finals. With the eighth pick, the Washington Wizards select.
let's ride together. So I can bring any car to Oarsman Fairfax Toyota and they'll buy it? That's what they just said on TV. Doesn't matter what year, make, or model. No. And I can get Kelly Blue Book for it? More. 125%. And if I buy a new car, I'll get their buyer's edge with $1,500 in bonus extras? Yes. I find that very hard to believe. Ugh. And don't forget at Oarsman, we'll buy any car. Oarsman Fairfax Toyota. Let's ride together. When I coach kids sports, I teach my players about teamwork, winning, and always giving 100%. At Chase and Boscolo, we've been using those same principles since 1986 to help injured people rebuild their lives. We answer your questions, treat you like family, and fight for your best interests. We're lawyers that care. If you've been injured, call Chase and Boscolo, 1-800-728-5898. NBC Sports Washington is your home in the District of Champions. Thirteen thirty left to the second period. The Bears in front here in Game Three of the Calder Cup Finals, two to one, on the Joe Snively goal. John Hayden to center ice. The former Buffalo Saber works it in offensively. Logan Day is there to take it away to Henrik Borgstrom. It's been all last year, the National Hockey League with the Chicago Blackhawks. One game this year with Washington, otherwise a mainstay for the Bears. Nass crunched at center. The puck lands offensively. Frank gets it across to late penalty call in front. Back. Yoni shot it just wide. The Bears are going to get a power play. Frank will draw the minor. Nass with it. Shepard heading to the bench for the extra skater. Great move by Day. Working it free, slowing it down. The Vecchioni top side today. Wants to work at far corner. Touch to Vecchioni. Played it behind the net. Swung out by Ness. Touched up by the Firebirds. And the Bears already converting one. So the power play. Go to work as Ethan Frank has scored a goal and drawn the minor. Hershey looking to go up by two. That's the Ethan Frank we came to know so well this season. If he's not scoring a goal, he's breaking free or being strong on his skates. You can see they try to tie him up. Because he's got a potential 2 and one over to Vecchioni with Borgstrom on the trail. Firebirds had to get rid of that one, do something, because that was a dangerous situation. Now, we'll see what happens again with the, with the man advantage. Pretty obvious one there for the officiating crew as the arms go up from Justin King and Carter Sandlack. Billy Petman will sit the Bears to the man advantage, one for one on the Frank Snipe. Not out there right now for Hershey as he's tired from drawing that minor. Off the draw away, and Henrik Borgstrom puts it behind the net. Where Mason Morelli goes to work. Taylor on power play. Borgstrom missed it. Look out shorthanded. Alex True down the right wing. Cuts in. Angles wide on the forward McMichael. Five forwards out. You can sometimes exploit them. Firebirds do have three goals shorthanded in the playoffs. Borgstrom of the far wing. But Cormick's going to knock it back to his own zone. Coachella Valley taking their sweet time with it. Snively, though, at center, able to intercept it. That's one that should have been down the ice. It's not. The Bears working in offside, and now get the other power play unit over is the idea from Nick Bootland, assistant coach, and Todd Nelson. They'll switch it up so those guys get a breather, and the unit that scored will head on out. Anytime you have a forward skating backwards and they're coming at you one-on-one, -on -one, that's, that's not a situation you want to see. Connor McMichael held his own, made true go around, nothing happening. They'll regroup with Protus at center, taking the draw. Puck cleared all the way down off the stick of Hayden, up and out of play, but it was tipped at center ice, so no minor penalty. The puck was shot out from the defensive zone by the Firebirds. Had it gone over the glass on its own from the defensive zone, that's a minor penalty, but Hayden tipped it in neutral, so the draw just goes offensively. Well, and Annis and the Bears are right on it. They want to see that, that draw come down into the circle or right to the right of Joey Decord. Alexei Pronis out there. He's connected twice on the power play in the playoffs. The only player to do that for Hershey. Frank played it between the defenders. Dave will have to rag it in his own zone. 12 minutes left, second period. 2-1 Hershey here in game three. Trying to get back into this series, trailing two games to none. Sam Annis to center. Skates over the blue line. Left wing to Frank. Looks to buy some time and space. Has to send it to the corner. Decord cuts it off behind the net. Good play by the goaltender. Tennyson will clear. Shepard can't play it yet. Now in the no-touch area. Gets it away from Torinsky. Took the feet out of the goaltender. Shepard down as the Bears break it ahead. Protus over the blue line. Shepard just getting back to his feet in some discomfort. 
Bears have the puck right wing to Sam Annis. Kerensky just gets back in the play. Fans irate and there was no call. Shepard on his skate sheet. Frank to Pilon. Got to make him pay on the power play. That's the best medicine. Right side Annis. Fans on the pass. Taken by Schultz. Realize he's got some room. He'll skate to center. See if we get a look at the replay of the next whistle. Torinsky may have just lost his footing inadvertent why they didn't call a penalty. Well, yeah. the, that's what the official, I have to imagine, thought. Yeah, and he was standing right over it. I mean, he watched the play. The whole thing happened right in front of him. Think Michael over the blue line with speed. Wide around Whitcomb. Takes it behind the net. The closing 10 of the power play. Johansson with it. 2-1 Bears. Iorio shot. Missed the net. Up the near wing, McLeinkel will collect it back to full strength when the Bears still have the puck. Connor McLeinkel across, and that pass ill advised. Looking for Iorio, but Petman coming out of the box, it goes back to center. Bears one for two on the power play. They do not strike. Yeah, that was a bit of an ugly two minutes. That was kind of a weird power play. Iorio behind his own net. Will collect the loose puck nearly halfway home. Second period, 10.30 to go. Good rush by Vincent Iorio, the rookie. Across to Vecchioni. Left circle, Snively. He'll play it behind the goal, off the boards. By himself with the Bears changing. Coachella Valley able to work it to the line. Not out as center keeps it in for a moment. And the Bears regroup at center. The smash line out there right now after the power play. On the dump in center, pressuring to Korn. And on the right wing, it's picked up by Hershey's Dylan McElrath. Shepard has had some time to shake off, getting his feet taken out. Always tough as a goaltender. You don't expect to get hit. He appears to be all right, but fell hard on his backside near the boards. Michael Rath with you tied up in his own zone, far corner. There to help out for Hershey, his lap here. Plays it to St. Steele on the near boards. Sutter lifting the stick of Schultz, separates the puck, rattles the glass, then throws down Broden with an excellent hit. Schultz will keep it in, though. Puck to the goal, backhander on Anna Glussie by Shepard, and he'll hang on. 2-1 Hershey, midway through, back after this. You're tuned in to the 2023 Calder Cup Finals. The GMC Sierra with hands-free driving. It rocks. Or did 0.9% APR plus over 1,200 trade assistance and no monthly payments for 90 days on Sierra 5.3 liter V8 light duty models. Every two minutes, a woman in the U.S. is diagnosed with breast cancer. And in that moment, her life changes forever. The toll is great. The need is greater. The need to find comfort in the dark hours. The need to find hope in the cures. And that's why when others look away, we lean in. We're fighting alongside patients because we know one moment can change everything. But we need your help to make more moments of hope possible. Join our fight. Save lives. Because we are all stronger together. The best Capitals coverage starts here. Only on NBC Sports Washington. Your home of the Washington Capitals. Let's go Caps. Welcome back to Hershey Bears Hockey in the Calder Cup Finals here at Giant Center. 2-1, the Bears in front. 9.28 to go in the second period of play. Hershey unable to connect on the power play. Here's a look at Carson Turinsky. Yeah, it just looked like he lost his footing there to me, Todd, and went into Shepard, and it's that's tough because Shepard basically got almost the version of a slide tackle in soccer there. Yeah, I mean, I don't see a lot of intent there, but I also don't see a really great effort to avoid him. I know he lost his skates, but yeah, I mean, he, did, he cut it a little close, didn't he? And you cut it that close. Thanks for the puck. Frank's on it first. Takes it behind the net. Anytime you run into the goaltender, then it's going to draw a crowd. As Frank sandwiched to the boards, works the puck free to Henrik Borgstrom. Borgstrom, one of many guys that in another level has won a championship. His in the collegiate ranks, Denver, under former mayor Jim Montgomery, now the head coach of the Boston Bruins. Won a national championship there. Zach, last thing I'll say about it is you're supposed to protect defenseless players. 
and he would not have argued if that call went against him, I can tell you that. Unclear to Santa Rice under nine to go. Second period of play, 2-1 Hershey in front. Coach Snively with the lone goal the second period. It came 105 in. By Oriole with the hit. Rafferty to get it. Plays it to the far corner. Froden to Tink. On the near wing where Connor McMichael with a helper in this game. Sees it swung far corner. Far wing. The Firebirds with it. Knocked back to the point. It's Evans to the goal. That shot got blocked away. Bears doing a good job protecting the net in front of Shepard. Want that house series in front of the goaltender. Far wing corner. Picked up by Cameron Hughes. Works the left wing. The defenseman Olafson joining. Knocked the stick out of the hands. And an extra hit there on Snively from Ponderalski. And the Bears head to the power play with 8.14 to go in the second. Good work by Hershey not retaliating. They will go to the man advantage time. This was almost a chance to take two Firebirds off the ice because Snively stops a play and slashed the stick right out of his hands and then they came and hit him. Started to rough him up a little bit. I mean, that was close to being a 5-on-3. Here's the play. There's the slash right there. Knocks the stick out. Snivy hasn't done anything. And then, boom, forehead, the forearm to just almost underneath the chin. So we call getting your money's worth. If you're going to get a penalty, both Olison and Ponorowski said, give us the two minutes, but we're going to make sure it's worth it. Slash the stick out of the hands. That's pretty much an automatic. Bears will go to the power play for the third time. They're one for two. And once again, a chance to take a two-goal lead. And again, Joey Decord moving laterally. Second power play unit will start. They've been the better of the two groups thus far in this one. Annis to the point. Frank left circle, shielded. On the blue line, Days drive. Blocker saved Decord. Rolls loose. Not cleared. Kept in by Garrett Pilon. Good work by Hershey. Rodis, though, fans on it behind the net. Time for Schultz to clear it. He coughed it up. Pilon stole it. There's take it away. Eric Pilon right ball. Trying to make something out of nothing, but chopped down by Coachella Valley. The length of the ice, Shepard to stop it. They took too long to clear it the first time. Didn't waste any time for the chance to get rid of it. Frank to center. Skates with speed over the blue line. Left wing to Pronis. Pats towards the goal. Lays it around the boards. Too fine for everyone. And back to center. Pilon lost his stick. He's got a soccer style booted today. There's fortunate T realized the situation and came back. There's making a line change. 105 left of the power play. Nothing new and yet. Vacchioni along the right wing. Plays it behind the goal. He gets tripped up. Fans want a call. None coming. They won't put him five on three. And it's cleared all the way down. They've been a little sloppy the last three minutes of power play time. Puck hopping over their sticks. They're losing the handle. Still have time to make something happen here. McMichael overlaps at center. Along the left wing, shoots it in wide to court. An intelligent dumping. The Bears retrieve it behind the net. Vacchioni to Snively. Wanting to go to the point. They get it there. McMichael. Cross Borgstrom. With some room. Tried to thread the needle. The pass got blocked. And he got it to Snively. He was open, but didn't think he could shoot it. Shepard comes darting out of his net to stop it in front of the goal line with the Firebirds changing. 6.35 last second period. It's 2-1 Hershey. McMichael to center. Knifing through the defense. Right wing, Snively. McMichael jumped. They'll go to Vacchioni. On the right circle, overskated the puck. Knocked into the boards. Firebirds cleared behind the net. I tell you, I've got no problem with the officials tonight, but in game two, there would have been eight, nine penalties already. That's what we were talking about with the standard. I'm, I'm all right with this. I think the officials have done a good job getting it back to where it should be for playoff hockey. I agree. I agree. Power plays over. The Bears don't convert. Iorio leads the charge. One on three over the blue line. Waiting for help. Threw it in front. Tipped away from Sutter. One goal in the playoffs from Riley. And knocked back behind the goal. Sutter far corner. Hands up. He smokes Hughes. Rattling the glass as the Firebirds have to ice it. And this is much more like Hershey Bears hockey tonight. Even though power play wasn't what they desired. Doing a lot of things well. Five on five and leading 2-1 in the closing six minutes. Look, the power play wasn't perfect, right? They didn't cash in, but... It's the work that they're doing to get this man advantage, to get those two minutes where the ice is tilted on their side. That's Hershey Bears hockey just past the midway point in this game tonight. They look solid. They're finishing checks. They're working hard. The forwards are getting, a, making it really difficult on the Firebirds defenseman tonight. Off the faceoff, Malenstein behind the net, throwing a good hit. Looking to knock the puck loose. Riley Sutter will get it for the Bears. To the blue line, Michael Rent. Across to Gabriel Carlson. McElrath lines. Fires a blocker save by Decord off the glass. 
The Bears recover the puck. Sutter gloves and drops. Takes it to the blue line. His shot to the goal block, and Malenstein will stab at it to the corner. Center ice, a collision as the Bears get the puck. LaPierre built to the boards, but Sutter is there, the helping hand. To Malenstein, closing 5-15 of the period. Bears looking to go up by two. Malenstein shoots, blocked in front. That didn't feel good for Rafferty. Bears trying to get the puck on the far boards. They will with Sutter. Here's an anxious heat. Sutter the goal, short side shot. The cord seals the post. Sutter digs it out of the pile, clear into the line, not out. Club down by McElrath. Clinic in the offensive zone. Cord to play it, gave it away. Shot to the goal, to court the save. Sprawled out, and he nearly got burned there. And here we go, rough stuff in front. Cartier involved, as is Tennyson with Malenstein. 4 and 49 left in the second. We'll take a break. 2 1 Hershey. You're tuned in to the 2023 Calder Cup Finals. Capital One Arena is the destination for all the best concerts and shows to hit the DMV. From heart-pounding music to show-stopping performances, Capital One Arena has it all. Check out some of the shows coming soon to Capital One Arena. Davido, Alicia Keys, Erica Badu, Drake. Visit CapitalOneArena.com for more information. Hello, innovation. Goodbye, injuries. Hello, science. Goodbye, seizures. Hello, tiny incisions. Goodbye, lengthy recoveries. At Children's National Hospital, we're making breakthroughs daily so we can say hello to a healthier future for kids. I'm Katie from Long Roofing. For four generations, we've helped families just like yours bring beauty, value, and comfort to their homes. Our professional and customer-focused process will ensure that you protect your home for decades to come. Call now to get no payments and no interest for a full year, plus $1,500 off. Get your free estimate today, and you'll see we do roof replacement the right way, the long way. Hey, I'm Matt Adams, host of the Fairways of Life show, and you can catch us every week right here on NBC Sports Washington. If it happens in the game of golf, we'll take you inside the ropes. Welcome back to Hershey Bears Hockey. 2-1 Bears. We're skating four aside after some rough stuff. Andrew Calista is downstairs. We got some special guests in the house tonight. Enjoying some Hershey Bears playoff hockey. There's some very special guests. Now, the Firebirds might not agree that Hershey is the sweetest place on earth, but the community rallies together, and that includes its area teams. The Harrisburg Senators, all of them in the house, and we know down in Washington there's a special bond between the Nationals and the Capitals. Well, Nationals closer Sean Doolittle, who's in Harrisburg on a rehab assignment, he is in the house tonight supporting the Bears as well. Very cool stop. Double-A affiliate of the Nationals right here in Harrisburg, just down the road. The Senators in action earlier today, falling 7-3 to Erie. Good luck to them the rest of the way. They've been avid supporters of the Bears. They had a Bears night earlier this year, a hockey night in Harrisburg. Four-on-four four action. The Firebirds have scored four-on-four four in this series on the goal by Pittman back in game one. 2-1 Hershey leads. The way they're playing tonight, though, I don't mind some open room for them. They just have to be careful with Coachella Valley's talent and arsenal of forwards. The other thing I don't mind is the extra chirping and the hitting after the play. Look, the Bears are sending the message. We're in this series, too. We're not going anywhere. And we plan on responding tonight, and they are. Macchioni down the right wing will shoot to Korn. Nearly dropped it, but he's got it. Sealing it between his right arm and pad with Borgstrom going to the net front. Coming up in our second intermission report, there's a big party on the plaza before tonight's game. Here from some of the diehard Bears fans who attended, plus Andrew Kalista and Jim Jones will break down the second period, and Todd and I will have your second period highlights. It's all in our second intermission report coming up. One more look at that Vecchioni chance, and don't mind him being trigger happy there. Well, keep throwing shots on net. Well, maybe he'll let up a rebound and you outwork the guy to the net. The Bears are outworking him. All over the ice, they certainly can get the job done in front, too. Traum won by the Bears. Snively kicks it back to the point. By Oreo, left circle. He's going to take it down low, but fumbled the puck for a moment. Nearly escaped. Good job fending off a hit from McCormick. 
Mini Iorio showing flashes of why he's going to be a real good player for years to come. I like the idea. He had him beat too. If he didn't just stumble there at the end or lose lose the handle, he had him beat on that. One move. goal in the playoffs, and he struck in Hartford in the series clinching game. Talk to the very second round of play. Four and four for another minute. And Andrew Ponarowski is slippery. He leads to Olison, the defensive minded blue liner, turned it over. Right to Joe Snively. Two on two up box. Snively over the blue line. Leads for Lucas Johansson. Tripped up with no call. Yes, there is going to be a penalty. Carlson shot from Pilon. Whistle will go. Power play Hershey. The trailer joining Gabriel Carlson. Knocked down. Hershey to a four on three power play for 42 seconds as Andrew Ponorowski will sit. Firebirds are one step slow again, trailing the play. Snively sniffed out that backwards pass. Went over, chased it down, set up the rush. Chance to take a 3-1 lead again, and the power play needs to connect here for the Bears with a lot of open room. The Chella coaching staff talking about it as you look at the guys in the sin bin. Gabriel Carlson joining the rush, taken out. It's good work, and another. that's an un, unforced error there by Olison of the point. Turning it over, and Snively said, thank you very much. And Joe's look good here today. Just that little play that we saw, kicking the puck back on the faceoff to Iorio. And Johansson's looked great, too, Zach, offensively. He's yeah. really getting involved. He is not hesitating to get involved offensively. He's making a big difference. Four on three, a lot of room. You see this in the regular season on the power play in overtimes when it's three on three. Throat is tossed, so no natural centers out there. Frank has played some center in his life. He'll take the draw. To Snively along the left wing. Dennis crunch sandwich on the boards, but Protus is there. The Bears have it. Across to front. Love to get him isolated and shoot it. Snively to the goal line. Dennis with it. Across to Frank. He's got it with time. Gives it back to Snively. Goal line feed Annis. You know, goal four on three in overtime this year. The Snively right wing. No shooting lane. Patient here. Snively to Annis. Left circle. Protus in front. Hannes to the goal line. Frank is there. They're getting to cord moving. Frank across one timer. Shanked high and wide from Snively down to his knees, right circle. The five on four and eight seconds. Frank to Snively. Back to Frank. Popped his tank. Now he'll shoot. Backed away to the near board. It's five on four now for a minute 18. Hannes cuts in and shoots. It scores! That went in. They'll say no. And play will continue, but that definitely went up and in. It's going to be 3 1 Bears after review. That went in the net and came out. They're going to say no goal on the ice. And unless I'm crazy and my eyes deceive me, this should be 3-1 Hershey. Sam Annis with a power play goal. Well, he's celebrating, and he knows that went in. Oh, he yeah. He wouldn't celebrate. Back bar and in. We're going to get a behind-the-net view, and this should be called a goal. The referees are going to look at the overhead angle. We better... talked about how sneaky Sam Annis is. Andrew brought him up earlier. You give him room, you give him time. He's not going to beat you with his wheels. He's going to beat you with his precision and his skill. And that's what he does on this play. We just need the replay to confirm it, Zach. Here it is. This puck looked like it went up and in for Manis. A slow-mo look. Slowly waiting, waiting. Oh, yeah. Back bar and out. That should be a goal. Yep. As long as the overhead video review camera is working, that should confirm a point to center ice. The officials taking a look right now. Justin Key and Carter Sandlack. Again, all they can review is an overhead camera angle that's above each net on a small iPad. But from what we just saw there and what we saw on the ice, if they don't somehow call this a goal, and it'll be criminal. And sure looked like it hit the middle back bar and came out. They just have to be sure. The call on the ice was no goal. They have to be able to confirm it. We're getting another look on our delayed monitor here. Here comes the call. Should be a point to center. And it is! Sam Annis on the power play! Video review confirms it's 3-1 Hershey! They're making the Firebirds pay for their mistakes. They're a step behind. They've been in the penalty box. And once again, the Bears cash in. Slick Sam Annis, take a look. You cannot give him that much time. He is a veteran scorer that will make you pay. Lines it up. Gives the Bears a two-goal advantage. Todd Nelson's squad up by two. 
No goals in game one, no goals in game two, no goals on the power play in any of them. They've got two, and they've got three total. And they lead 3-1. They've opened up their biggest lead of the night. And not done yet. Sam Annis with the goal. We sure looked, thought it was in for the naked eye. And the video gives the Bears a goal there. We've seen a few of those of late in the playoffs. Working in the Firebirds. Pagansky shot knocked away. Shepard will dive out, poke it to the corner. Out Ethan Frank tonight. A goal and an assist. Snidely with a help for two as the puck bounces wide to Shepard once and twice. Great work from Gabriel Carlson, too, on that play. Trying the minor, making a good defensive play here. Up the boards, the Bears can't get out. Some urgency from the Firebirds. You knew the guys on the ice probably knew that puck was in and probably were going, we're going to get a goal called against us. Let's get going. They're pushing here. Clear to the line. Club down, held in. Schultz cuts that. Shoots. Big save. Shepard. The rebound. Off the goal. Posted out. The Bears get some puck luck finally themselves. Up here. One on two. Over the blue line. He's offside. The whistle will go. But it gives the Bears a chance to take a breath. After the goaltender's best friend keeps him up by a pair. Well, the Bears executing the game plan. Doing a great job tonight. Of working in front. Taking their time. Some of these goal scorers finally finding their mark. We talked about Ethan Frank. We talked about Joe Snively. And of course, oh, there's off the post right there as you talked about the with the puck luck, Zach. Give Hunter Shepard a little bit of break too. And then obviously we talked about Sam Hannis as well. So the forwards come into life tonight. 142 to go, second period. The Bears in front. 3-1. On the latest from Annis, it's fourth at 17-18 from Frank and Snively on the power play. Three power play goals combined in this game. Two for Hershey, one for Coachella. Bears out shooting the Firebirds 16-15 and 11-5 here in the second. Their game has gotten stronger. Riley Sutter with it behind the net. Upended. Hayden lost his stink. The Bears get to pack up the boards and look to clear it. Bumper cars right now. Sutter gets it, looks to break to center. Tipped in by Malenstein to Korn with a nonchalant with it. He is real confident with the puck, isn't he? Not worried that it's going to get away from him. Puck dumped in behind the net. Schultz will stop it behind the goal. Far wing, Day steps up, negates Cartier. Wetco to lead the charge, play mostly forward for the Bears. Bears able to get the puck away from him. And he, the Eagle, his teammates called him here in Hershey. Pass in the feet of Orkstrom. Nice stick handling around McCormick. Right wing in the feet of Frank. Trying to rush it to the goal. Looking for Malenstein. Knocked away. And the Firebirds look to clear it. McCormick popped it up. Under collision in front of the benches. Klaus Coachella Valley a chance to clear it all. Just out of the reach of Orkstrom. Oh, I see on a lane to the net. Firebirds under pressure. Have really had a hard time tonight. And give credit to the Bears. This is much more their game plan. And it's center, not loose. Bears will change. Ten left in the second period that has seen Hershey strike twice. And you hear the Giants center get to their feet here. Through 40 minutes of play, the Bears will have a 3-1 to one lead here in Chocolate Town in game number three. How many times have we watched it? Hunter Shepard, keep him in the game early. Score first. Do not trail. And then outwork the other team, draw some penalties, cash in on the power play, executing their winning formula that they've used all year long, especially in front of the home fans, Zach. Got to play tough, got to play disciplined in the third period, and try and lock this thing down. No doubt, this game isn't over yet. We've seen Coachella score three in a period and four in a period as well. The Bears have to finish the job here, but you have to be encouraged by their work tonight. They look like a totally different hockey team. Yeah, emphasize the discipline, right? Stay out of the box, continue to play tough, but so far, so good. Intermission report coming up. 3-1 Bears will step aside. Hershey in front. You're tuned in to the 2023 Calder Cup Finals. Want to eat, bet, and cheer like a Caesar in the District of Caesars? I got a guy. Follow me. Specifically this guy, Guy Fieri. And this is Guy Fieri's D.C. Kitchen and Bar. So pull up a seat, people, and get the royal treatment in Flavortown. Feast your eyes on 18,000 square feet of wall-to-wall -wall sports, wagering, and game day eats. 
Seven days a week. Y'all have what C's have. Eat, bet, and cheer like a Caesar. Guy Fieri's DC Kitchen and Bar. An easy way to improve your mental well-being and overall heart health is to walk 30 minutes a day. Brought to you by Sheehy Auto Stores during our Sheehy Has Heart Sales event to benefit the American Heart Association and to make living a heart-healthy life easier. Everyone's a winner at MGM National Harbor with our three-team parlay of food, drinks, and sports. Find out more about our immersive sports experience at MGMNationalHarbor.com. It's guaranteed to be monumental. Turn down the outside noise with Sound Shield. This is more than a window. It's peace and quiet. Hear the difference with Thompson Creek's exclusive Sound Shield windows, filtering out 35% more noise than our standard double pane windows. And call right now to save 40%. Buy one, get one 40% off all Sound Shield windows. Hear the difference with Sound Shield. Call 855 57 Creek. At Amco, we've been fixing cars for almost 60 years. And over that time, a lot sure has changed. Cars have gotten more complex than ever, but the technicians at Amco have the expertise to fix anything. The problem is with your transmission valve body and torque converter. We do this all the time. So if your check engine light is on, let us take a look. Because we know cars inside and out. Double A, MCO. Game three of the Calder Cup finals right here on Fox 43.2. The Hershey Bears wanted to shake up the turbulence inside by hosting a party on the plaza. Let's go Bears! Hershey Bears fans bringing the intensity early outside on the plaza to hopefully put out the flames inside. We're here to feed them that energy if they don't have it. Uh, we have enough energy to get them going, get them back into this down 0-2. Can't let the Firebirds get us. This is a no-fly zone. Bears Nation rolling in, wrapping the squad. Well, the party on the plaza has fans flocking to Chocolate Town to take part in the festivities. From the beginning, it's always been the fans, and that's that's what makes us even like Hershey more because it's like we're just a big family, yeah. like a big bear family. <laughs> it's always exciting here. The fans are great. They get loud. They get proud. Hopefully, they can bring it tonight. Covering every inch in the chocolate and white. Even the youngest of Cubs writing encouraging messages as we all believe. We're never losing faith in these guys. Um, see them come back too many times to have that doubt in them. The Bears will have a party on the plaza every home game of the Calder Cup Finals. Stay with us. Andrew and Jonesy will be back when the Hershey Bears hockey returns on Fox 43. Withers District Gaming season is heating up, and the two-time NBA 2K League champions have a new home here in Washington, D.C. at District E. WizDG's next home game features a rivalry matchup against Celtics Crossover Gaming, where the trash talk will be loud and play will be as intense as ever. Catch the best NBA 2K players in the world in action on June 24th at 4 p.m. at District E. Scan the QR code for your tickets. While most drivers spend their lives going from point A to B, in America, we're all about point X. That's why our most versatile BMW X-Range vehicles are proudly manufactured right here in Spartanburg, South Carolina. The BMW X-Range, your next X-Venture, starts here. Hurry in, release a 2023 BMW X3 X-Drive 30i for $6.19 per month. Even after 40 years serving our area, people still ask, what is a five-star technician? Well, it's simple, they're the best. When you're talking heating and air conditioning, they're professionally trained and the most knowledgeable in the business. For your plumbing or electrical needs, they can do it all. 
For pest control and home performance, trust me, you want a five-star technician at your home. For more than 40 years, Crop Metcalf, home of the five-star technician. Crop Metcalf is the one with five stars. 25 years ago, when I was just a boy, I couldn't imagine a world where cancer was a curable disease. Thanks to research funded by the Prostate Cancer Foundation, all that is changing. I've had prostate cancer. My dad had it, which means now I'm at a greater risk. For a long time, cancer was one step ahead. Now, the Prostate Cancer Foundation's research is delivering new treatments to patients all the time. It's more time with family and rounds with good friends. And that's more golf with my dad. That's more chances to take you down. Join us as we finally take the lead over cancer and put this game behind us once and for all. The Prostate Cancer Foundation, they're saving lives. I beat it and so can you. To get ahead of the game, go to PCF.org to learn more. Welcome back to Giant Center, Hershey Bears Hockey on Fox 43.2. Andrew Kalissa alongside Jim Jones. Jonesy, a lot to like in that period. Let's start with it, the give and go between Garrett Pilon and Joe Snively. And finally, Joe Snively puts one in the back of the net. Yeah, two guys. Uh, Garrett Pilon's had a great series so far, and you love to see that give and go. Opening up the second period with that goal kind of took Coachella right out of it, right from the get-go. And the Bears did a great job of pushing the pace all period long. Right after that, we gave a little shout out and maybe a little of note and what we expect to see from Sam Annis. He's been one of the more productive guys in the playoffs for the Chocolate and White, and he comes through with a great goal. And you got to give it up to Ronnie Lewis. He saw it right away on the ice. Yeah, longtime goal judge Ronnie Lewis. He had the light on right away. Sam Annis played in the Calder Cup Finals last year with Springfield. Big time goal scorer. Great season for him this year. Hurt in the middle of the season. Great to see him come back. He's a playmaker. That's a big goal to end the uh, second period for the Hershey Bears. Yeah, that injury was an abdominal injury, and he's come back with flying colors. A lot to like in that period. If there was one downside, Hershey not really sharp on the power play. No, but uh, great to see the, a lot of good things. Uh, Hunter Shepard with a big save after Joe Snively's goal coming off of Garrett Pilon's pass. Hunter Shepard with a huge save off his mask to keep the game at 2-1. to 3-1 to one going into the third. The Bears have Coachella where they want. A lot of good puck movement. Nelson talked about cycling the puck. I think they did a great job of that in the second period. He, Coach Nelson also talked about discipline after those penalty issues in game two. Hershey not responding to any of the antics. We've seen Beck Mal Malenstein rough it up a little bit, but that was after Hunter Shepard got taken out. You got to defend your goalie. You always have to protect your goalie. The, tra the train to the penalty box ended out in Coachella. And the other thing, too, we got to give a shout out to the Hershey Bears fans. This is a tough building to play in each and every night. The Bears fans are bringing it big time time tonight the rally towels have been out and they've done their job to keep Coachella back out of this game you don't want to open that door as we go into the third period we're walking through the hallway we finally hear some hooting and hollering and some good vibes and good mojo going right now for Hershey yeah I spent a lot of time in the room during the season doing my interviews and it's a room that's a lot of veteran players and a lot of young guys that play big time minutes and play very mature hockey so I don't think there's anything to worry about you got guys like Beck Malenstein Mason Morelli and the captain has played really well shout out to Dylan McElrath. He's played a good game tonight after a rough one in Coachella Valley. Played a very good game. A lot of defensemen hopping up into the zone. If there's one guy we could get a goal from, it'd be Mike Vecchione. Am I right? Mike Vecchione brings it each and every night. He's not always on the score sheet, but he, you know, there's a guy. We've got Annis on the score sheet. We've got Snively on the score sheet as well. So let's get Mike Vecchione, and maybe we can get one of these. We can get a little bit of a roar afterwards, like, ah, like that. Absolutely. The crowd is roaring. A lot of good stuff going. The most important stat is Hershey is up 3-1 in Game 3 of the Calder Cup Finals. You're watching Hershey Bears Hockey right here on Fox 43.2. The GMC Sierra with hands-free driving. Yeah, it runs. Or did 0.9% APR plus over 1,200 trade assistance and no monthly payments for 90 days on Sierra 5.2.
Raider V8 light duty models. Hi, I'm Katie from Long Roofing. For four generations, we've helped families just like yours bring beauty, value, and comfort to their homes. Our professional and customer-focused process will ensure that you protect your home for decades to come. Call now to get no payments and no interest for a full year, plus $1,500 off. Get your free estimate today, and you'll see we do roof replacement the right way, the long way. Isn't it time you With the eighth pick, the Washington Wizards select... kind of thinking like oh my gosh I think we could be sisters you know because yes, I think we look right. you know yeah, and I don't think at that time I think you're the one to tell me that we had the same yeah. birthday it's really unbelievable when you think about it because it's been like really over 20 years that you were my mother and father's banker you became my banker and now our friend is in her third year of college and you're her banker and so unbelievable because I'm just 20 years old <laughs> If you need $750 or $1,500, up to $3,000, just go to WeFixMoney.com and get the money you need as soon as tomorrow. WeFixMoney.com is free to use and available 24-7, and you don't need perfect credit. Go to WeFixMoney.com right now, and we'll guarantee that in two minutes, you'll find out if you're approved for a loan of up to $3,000. Money you could get by tomorrow. Go to WeFixMoney.com. So far, so good for the Hershey Bears. A capacity crowd here at Giant Center in Game 3 of the Calder Cup Finals, cheering Hershey to a 3-1 lead through 40 minutes. With Todd Sadowski, I'm Zach Fish, and Albert, our producer behind us, working alongside our great state production crew. Shout-out to Iron Selby, Tracy, all of our great radio crew as well. We're all over the place right now here in the Calder Cup Finals. And, Todd, this has been a lot of fun here so far for the Bears. They're not done yet. This is a potent Coachella team. you got to give them a lot of credit. What we saw on the road is they're a quick strike offense, but the Bears are doing a lot of things well, and I think their game's amping up. Their passing was really good in that second period. The tone was set, as we'll see momentarily with our highlights, for that give and go with Joe Snively. Yes, and we're going to show you the goal scorers, right? You're going to show you Snively and Annis and show you all that kind of stuff. What we might not show you is a lot of what the defensemen are doing as well. And there's that beautiful move by Snively, the give and go with Garrett Pilon. It goes to the backhand, and the cord goes to, to the ice, and he beats him on the backhand, and that really ramped up the place on just a, a phenomenal turn of events for that. Look at the bench. They know it. They're ready to go. That makes it two to one. Look and at Zach Fucali there going up and down the bench. <laughs> what a great teammate. He hasn't played in you know, all but one game in the playoffs. And you know and His counterpart, Hunter Shepard, did the job in that second period. Yeah, and this is what you're, you're seeing a lot of. Riley Sutter and just a couple of physical plays right there. And they're not making anything easy for Coachella Valley. The forwards are really working hard. The defensemen getting involved offensively just like everything that's happening right now for Hershey and of course they want to continue it for the final 20 minutes there's Alexi Protus in front of the court there on the four on three and Sam Annis just precision right there I called him slick Sam Annis how about savvy Sam Annis both of them apply he knew it was in they celebrated the goal before they even made it official Bears knew they scored and indeed video review confirms it a 3-1 lead for Hershey shot 17 to 15 the Bears dominated that category in the second period out shooting Coachella Valley 12 to 5 in that second period of play after just five shots on goal for themselves in the first so what will the third bring it's been the Bears best period in the playoffs trying to wrap it up here we're looking forward to having the call Todd and I will be back with it so stick around with us here at Giant Center the 2023 Calder Cup playoffs of the 2023 Calder Cup finals right here on Fox 43.2. Driven to go the extra mile with style that's hard to ignore. The new Highlander goes above and beyond, putting you and your crew in position to upgrade your adventure. Now get 3.49% APR on a new Highlander. Drive with purpose. Arrive in style. Toyota. 
Let's go places. My grandfather was a Ukrainian immigrant. He lived in this DC row house and owned a tailor shop. My father managed a toy store down the street after he returned from World War II. They both loved the Washington region and taught me to serve our community. That's why my law firm, Greenberg and Betterman, has helped thousands of people in the District, Maryland, and Virginia for over 35 years. We're here to help you, our neighbors and friends, as we have done with care for so long. Greenberg and Betterman, contact us. Feel better. Hello, innovation. Goodbye, injuries. Hello, science. Goodbye, seizures. Hello, tiny incisions. Goodbye, lengthy recoveries. At Children's National Hospital, we're making breakthroughs daily so we can say hello to a healthier future for kids. At Jiffy Lube, it's our job to keep you moving. With a full range of services from oil changes and tire rotations to filters, wipers, and more, we've got what your car needs right when you need it so you're ready for whatever's next. Putting you in the driver's seat of car care, that's a job for Jiffy. At Jiffy Lube, it's our job to make car care make sense with personalized service reviews that swap the car talk for straight talk so you know what your car is telling you and what to do about it. Putting you in the driver's seat of car care, that's a job for Jiffy. We introduce you to the atmosphere that is Capital One for the Stanley Cup playoffs. I really like to get to know the players and just meeting some of the other season ticket holders. Pretty special to have such a great support from the fans and that's really what it's all about. The third period of Hershey Bears Hockey on Fox 43 is presented by Pocono Mountain Visitors Bureau. Looking to lock it down for a game three win here at Giant Center. 20 minutes to go so far. So good for the Hershey Bears. And when they lead after two periods of play in the Calder Cup playoffs, they're six and all. With Todd Sadowski, I'm Zach Fish. Thanks for being with us on the Highmark Bears Radio Network, AHL TV, the Capitals Radio Network, watching on NBC Sports Washington, plus our television partner, Fox 43. Andrew Kalinch to his high side. We'll hear from him in a moment as the Bears leading 3-1. Two goals in the second. They go to work offensively. Ethan Frank back of the goal up the near boards. Hershey left to right in the chocolate sweaters. Down in the series. Two games to none. Ty Cartier with it. Knocked away. Stretch pass center. Frank off his team. And played back defensively by the Firebirds to neutral. Gabriel Carlson across to Nilan McElrath. Set up for Mike Vecchioni. And it's Connor McMichael with it, flinging it in on goal. Decord will catch it and drop it. He's going to have to cover it. And hang on as the faceoff will go in the offensive zone for the Bears. Yeah, he wanted to keep the, the play flowing, but no one to throw it to on his own team. So he, he held on to it. It's going to be interesting, Zach, to watch the Firebirds in the third period. Obviously, they haven't dealt with this situation yet against Hershey. They're aggressive as it is offensively and, and super talented. So down a couple of goals, how aggressive are they going to be? And how quickly do they change their game plan to try and get goal number two or at least get more defensemen involved or see if there's any changes? You know, the Bears obviously be smart defensively, but don't let off and for a team that's been starving for goals. You want to get everybody have that offense, offensive confidence going, and you want to put the Firebirds away and not give them any hope of a comeback. Yeah, it's going to create some offensive opportunities for them, even like that one to Ethan Frank that they almost connected with down the middle. Nearly a steal for Pilon in the blue line. That was Hughes having a hard time with it. The puck is shrugged in behind the Bears' net. Carlson is after it for Hershey. Tied up along the boards. He's able to knock it loose. Snively to center. Three on two, maybe for Hershey. It's McMichael leading. Down the right wing, Cuddy in the middle, his pass deflected up and out of play as Rafferty into the crowd. Nice catch by a fan. Andrew Kalinsta downstairs, let's send it to him. Andrew, go ahead. Hey, sorry about that. Fish kind of loud down here on the ice. But right now, just wanted to point out that a lot of Capitals brass is in the building 
including new Capitals head coach and former Hershey Bears coach Spencer Carberry. Maybe a little extra inspiration for these guys to put on a good show in front of the bosses. Yeah, Spencer Carberry there, you see him in the middle of your screen. Holy Coles against there, and that's Rob Kincannon, the president of the South Carolina Stingrays as well. I know Ross Mahoney on the far right, who runs the draft. Oh, I see Emily Ingolnatsky as well, former Bears video coach. Was stretched their main video coach. So a lot of Capitals brass in attendance here tonight, along with Chris Patrick, Jason Fitzsimmons, Scotty Murray, Steve Richmond. It is a slew of the Capitals' top minds as they go into a new look with Kyberry as their head coach. Our agency in the draft coming up. We mentioned the hockey world is watching. There's only a few select teams still playing. Loose behind an Anton Allen Stein with 3 1. The Bears in front. It's cleared out to center ice and brought back by True. McCormick struggling with it over the blue line. Knocked down away from him. The fire boards. Morelli looking to find it for Hershey. And Frank free to center. They lift it to the fire blue line. Malenstein knocked down and shot in by the Bears behind the Coachella Valley net. The Corn surrendering three goals on 18 shots after stopping everything he faced in game one and 33 more in game two. Shot in behind the Bears net. Shepard is out to play it. Along the boards, up to the far side. Swatted back down by Alexei Protis. Oh, giveaway. Wright will steal it. Throws it down low to McCormick. They center and shoot. Oh, how did that not go in? Empty net. The Firebirds cannot convert. Shepard the save on the shot from the point from Tennyson. Bears to center. They catch a break and try to capitalize the other one. It's a game of inches. And it's left circle. Down low behind the net of the court. They center to Annis. Could break up Pagansky. Clear to the line, but not out. We'll have to get a look at that a second time, hopefully. See what that hint to stay out of the net. Uh, you cannot give Coachella Valley that golden of an opportunity on a mistake. Right behind the net, offensively here. It's McElrath up the right boards. Up by two. The Bears now in the offensive zone after catching a break in their own zone. That came out. Gabriel Carlson brought it to center. Outside is called with 17.04 left in the third. And a neutral zone faceoff. Alexei Protis, a backhand pass up the middle. That can't happen. He knows it. Right down low, McCormick. He's just I don't think Logan on. Day got Did there. Day get that? I don't think McCormick. I was surprised he dished it to the middle. I know he saw the trail. Let's watch look. it again. Oh, Shank just missed it. Put it wide. Oh, what a break for the Bears there. Coming through the middle. Yeah. Tried to elevate it with the Bears player sliding, and in the corner it went. He couldn't follow through on it. Logan Day was right there for the follow through, but his his initial hit certainly went wide. So you talk about almost doesn't count. Game of inches, all the cliches. Three posts for the Bears. Game two in the first period, nothing. Coachella Valley gets one that hits a stick and flutters up and in the net. Game one, Snively had a breakaway. Five minutes in, didn't score. Firebirds blow it out. But this time around, it's going the other way. And those are the reasons why you don't hit the panic button. There's a sense of urgency, but those are the reasons why you don't change everything about what you're doing. Harris to the point. Shot off the body. Froden got in the way of his own teammate. Comes back defensively. So the Firebirds are going to push here. We know that as the puck to center ice. Stolen by Garrett Peel on it. Three in the third period in game number one. They did not have any in game two as they open up a 4 0 lead. So Coachella Valley in the third period in the playoffs. They have scored 23 goals and surrendered 18. They'll wait behind their own net. The Bears up by two. We're fine with them taking their sweet time. The clear to center right to Lucas Johansson, who sends it back in. Lucas, the longest tenured Bear in his sixth season with Hershey, hasn't played the most games for the sheer fact he's had a lot of injuries. Puck rolls in. Ness blows a tiger and falls down. Allows Coachella Valley to take it for the moment. Pilon tied up. They get to McMichael at center. Did they? No, it's kept in. Looked like it was going to go out. The Firebirds have it. They center to Schultz. Good back check by Snively. Pilon is there. The Bears poke it away and go to work offensively. Pilon two on one. Around Podorowski. Pilon's into the net. Rolled just wide. Oh, he had to court down and out. Rolled off his tape to the corner. To court may have got a piece of the last moment. Milan tried to take it himself. He got the goalie to bite, nearly walked around him. I think he saw a page out of Snively's book get him to the backhand, just couldn't finish it. Great rush, though. One work by Carlson there, just missing Morelli. Center ice Hayden able to dump the puck in. 15.25 to go, third period. Punk up the left boards. Holison shot wide to Shepard for the far wing, stepping up. Morelli throws a good hit. 
It's Ville Pepin behind the goal. Morelli with it along the left side boards in his own end. Bears fans behind their club. Sold out crowd tonight, 10,500 plus. Looking to cheer their team on. Rugby scrum results in Hershey getting it. Snively couldn't get the pass. Kept in by the Firebirds. Carlson is there. I thought his defensive game was a rare, I don't want to say struggle, but made a couple mistakes in game two. That is so uncharacteristic for him. I think he's been the best defensive defenseman all year for the Bears, and he's been really good tonight. It's not a surprise. The complete body of work for him. McElrath behind the goal. He's able to knock their puck loose. Gets it to Sam Annis. Gets some air underneath it and flips it down the ice. With some English on it, it rolls wide. No icing in the last moment. Waved off. And the Bears go to work on the fourth check. Yeah, Firebirds let up chasing that one down. They got some opening on the left side. Rogan Rafferty with the lone Coachella Valley goal in this game. Gave the puck up. Kept in McCormick. Trying to swing it to the net in the far side corner boards. Where Hershey tied up. Looking to dig it free. By Oreo out of the pile. With it for the Bears to center right. It's Lapierre with it. Cross rink, rink pass. Brooks down the left side to that. Shoots off the right shoulder of the corn. And it's out of the air. Cut in front, but played with a high stick by Hershey. 13.53 to go on the third. The Bears still lead by two here in game three. Trailing in the series. They look to get on the board. Back after this, you're tuned in to the 2023 Calder Cup Finals. This right here is the extra-large New York-style pizza from Papa John's. And in order to make a big, tasty, extra-large New York-style pizza like this, you gotta really hand-stretch that fresh, never-frozen dough made from only six simple ingredients. Like this. Woof! Look at that! That's what makes a Papa John's extra-large New York-style pizza Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza, but you knew that. This may look like an action-adventure movie, but it's a Nissan sales event ad. Things are heating up. Good thing this Rogue has the most standard safety features in its class. Our competitors can't say that. Now get a low $2.99 per month lease on Rogue. Hurry. These epic offers won't last forever. At Amco, we've been fixing cars for almost 60 years. And over that time, a lot sure has changed. Cars have gotten more complex than ever. But the technicians at Amco have the expertise to fix anything. The problem is with your transmission valve body and torque converter. We do this all the time. So if your check engine light is on, let us take a look. Because we know cars inside <coughs> and out. Double A, MCO. Wizards coverage starts here. Chris and Drew take you inside the game, while the crew and I give you exclusive access to the team. NBC Sports Washington is your home of the Wizards. Welcome back to Hershey Bears Hockey. Zach Fish alongside Todd Sadowski. Andrew Kalista is down low, ice level. Located just to the right of Hunter Shepard, thanks to him and Jim Jones. For great analysis in between periods. Dylan McElrath will dump him. Hit Rogan Rafferty, comes to Bacchioni, right circle, shoots a blocker, saved by DeCord. Out to challenge, punched it out from Bacchioni. He's got it right wing. Bacchioni feeling it tonight. Stick save DeCord, good shot for a rebound, but DeCord able to pop it out to center. Nice idea by Bacchioni to go low and hard, right in the middle. Challenge and Rashad Terensky scores. Cross right feed. He makes him pay. Carson Terensky strikes. 3-2, Coachella Valley has made it a one-goal game. The former Lehigh Valley Phantom, fifth of the playoffs. Good shot by Vecchioni, a better shot right there. And if we got ourselves a one-goal game. Look at the cross-ice pass, connects. Vecchioni trails just by a hair. Got through McElrath's stick, great pass there. Obviously an excellent finish. Shepard just a little slow to get over as we're gonna look at it here. And went the length of the ice. We saw the Firebirds score like that in game one on the pass from Podorowski to Froden. That was more of a one-timer. This, he was able to clutch it and shoot it. Dan Bilesman, a longtime Penguins coach, his squad has made it a one-goal game. And you knew the Firebirds would not go away. So up to the Bears, not to panic, get back to work. They've been doing some things well offensively. Once again, DeCord playing the puck. Pulls a cucumber behind the net. 
Garrett Pilon with it. Looking for an answer. They had a lot of those in the series against Rochester. Snively was tied up. Parche at center. Good cut across. Iorio ran into his own man, though. Snively missed it. Here's Whitco over the blue line. Great back check, McMichael. And the Bears to center. Connor with it. Left wing to Snively. Looks to the goal. Shot it short side and wide. Day coming off the bench. Tries to step up and keep it in. Does for a moment. The Firebirds coughing up. Pilon with the steam. In the slot with the puck. Shoots and scores! with the forwards tonight for the Hershey Bears. Garrett Pilon early with a great rush. Wasn't able to finish. This time, a no-doubter right through the legs. Answers the Firebirds goal. Actually, over the glove side. Fantastic shot from Garrett Pilon. Puck rolling on edge. It might have elevated off Ponorowski's stick, too. But Garrett Pilon puts it up and in. He's had himself a whale of a game. And the Bears back up. Quite the response from Hershey. 4 2 to score. Hershey in front. Elon for Hershey. But before that, the other number 18, Turinsky or Coachella Valley. Or they could even announce it. The Bears respond. It's Nass with it up the near wing. Gets the fight to Sam Annis. Played with a high stick. Annis will take it, but Protus way offside. Annis will just have to dump it in. Love the determination and the grit from Garrett Pilon on the first run and that time. Got himself right in front. Logan Day with the assist, and that was an intelligent step up by him. Puck cleared all the way down to McElrath behind the net. Well, Zach, those are tough decisions when they score, and it makes it 3-2. to two. Do you want to continue to play defensively and keep them away? But great decision by Logan Day to step up and get involved. A mocking Joey Decord chant. The Firebirds fans chanting his name all the time. They're chanting it here at Giants Center as the puck is cleared down the ice. Gabriel Carlson is after it. He'll take it back behind the net. Up the middle. Give it away for a moment. Knock back to center. Morelli after it will glove it and drop it. Trying to get around Rafferty. He will. Cutting into the Bears. Malenstein looking for a pass. Plays it to himself behind the net. Lost track of it. Here by the Firebirds. The blue line and not out. Kept in. Malenstein in front. Big save to Corn. Down to the butterfly to keep it 4 2. But here we go. And Todd Hershey Park, 15 roller coasters there. They might have to add a new one here at Giant Center. This game has been a wave of emotions, much like, much like the rides at Hershey Park. Uh, a lot of peaks, a lot of thrills in this one. And it, once again, it's Johansson who just keeps it in play and turns it into a great A chance for Beck Malenstein. Todd Nelson got to be happy with this. Bears take the draw. Lucas Johansson centers. Knocked back down to the right point. Iorio has it. Vincent Iorio across. Played behind the net. Frank is after it to the far wing. And it's Vecchioni trying to clear it to the blue line. Vecchioni knocked down. Pitchfork to the ice. And scream, but we play on. Quick go cross rink. Bad giveaway. Stolen Vecchioni. Can he take advantage? Frank on side left wing. Shoots off the chest protector to Gord. Vecchioni jumped. And the fans want to call, but we play on. Shane Wright on the rush. Shoots to the net. Blocked by his own teammate, Pagansk. 4 2 Bears. And Shepard will seal it on the left post. Keeping a close watch on how the forwards play at this point. 10 25 left in the third period. And Ethan Frank winds up. You know how hard he can shoot it. It was a physical shift for Mike Vecchioni, that's for sure. As he gets knocked into the court. Draw to the right of Shepard. Dan Bilesmo looks on. Jessica Campbell is assistant on the right. Trailblazer in the hockey world, representing Canada. And now on the bench, as Bilesmo's assistant. Can't say enough, Zach, about what an answer that was from Pilon. Yes, Air had been taken out of the building, right? And he just energizes the place again. Huge game from Garrett tonight. Kind of final year of his contract, playing for whatever is next for him, whether it's here in the Capitals organization with the Bears. And he has been a 
Great soldier for this organization. The puck up and out of play, and uh-oh, it went straight out. Hershey going to be shorthanded here. So another opening for the Firebirds. Linesman insistent here on this. That's Mitchell Hunt, number 62. Now the officials are going to get together. Well, the Bears got a little bit casual in their own end. This is going to sit, and it is going to be a delay of game. Every time they've gotten together, they have gotten it right three times now, including the video review. So I don't know if that tells you they've gotten it wrong a few times initially, but at the end of the day, it's important that they get the call right. Not sure if we got a good angle of where that puck went as it was a bang-bang play, but Coachella Valley going to go to the power play, and this just the Firebirds second. They're one for one. So a bench minor for too many men earlier, and now a puck okay. over the glass. Good start to the PK, presented by Bokeh Mulligan de Mayo. McElrath will clear it. Well, Ness obviously frustrated on that, but his teammates determined to pick him up. Evans to center. Doubles on back. Picked up by the Firebirds. Over the blue line along the left wing. Ponorowski gets to Funk in offensively. Dribbled on back to the point where Evans waits for it, clutches, grabs, and leads for Ponorowski. Cross ring. Shot to the right, deflected away. Podorowski will recover. Former Calder Cup MVP. Has it again. Last circle. The bumper spot. Hart J.C. Shepard with a right pad on the rebound. McCormick banging away in front. Full extension. Shepard. What a stop. Carlson right there to clean house. Only allow one touch at the replay. Here's the shot. Comes off. Shepard pins the pad up against the post. So nothing's going to go in there. Shepard the save as we get another tight angle look there. Got it sealed and rattled around a little bit there where the Bears goaltender has now faced 21 shots, stopped 19. And when he's called upon most, he's made the quality saves. Shepard looking to pick up the victory for the Bears. Came in tonight. This is his 16th playoff game. He's played them all. But Cali came in relief once. But other than that, it's been Hunter Shepard's net. Schultz with it along the left wing. Has in the blue line. Far side, game three, Calder Cup Finals. Bears up by two. Rest shot, Schultz saves. Shepard rebound, poked in front. Bounces around, cleared by Hershey. All the way down the ice. Johansson took the extra second to make sure he made good contact with that one. He knew he had nobody around him, and he cleared it. Smart play. Firebirds will leave it. Out to center ice. McMichael defending. Chella Valley's allowed two shorties in the playoffs. McMichael to steal. Johansson trying to get it up the boards. He does and gets it out to center. 40 seconds left on the penalty to ask for delay a game. Over the blue line, left wing, true. Looks net front, drops it on back and stand. Rafferty, the former Utica Comet, his tape. He's got to skate back to center ice. Elon putting the pressure on him. Re-engaging. Hughes right to left over the Bears line. Past the middle, broken up. Short-handed. Here comes Hershey. McMichael. Rafferty's tired. That's Sutterbegger partner. Down the right wing. Riley takes it to the corner, kills the clock a bit. He's got men in front. He couldn't get it to him. He'll bounce it back to his own blue line and kill the clock some more. Down to 8-10 left in the third. 4-2 Hershey. They're going to kill off the minor for delay a game. Malenstein on the dump in. We're back to full strength as the fans, the sold-out crowd of 10,580 applauding the effort. Tata McElrath, two assists for Logan in this game. Protus on the dump in. Wide of decor, who looked unflappable, invincible. But the Bears have beaten four times on 24 shots. Next to the right point. Day is there. Cross rink, hop the tape of Sam Annis. To the blue line nest. Good cycle game here off the glove of a Firebird. Bears retrieve it behind the net. Wobbling puck for Day. He'll settle it to the helping hands. Lop here on net. Decor and get a piece of it. And a rebound there past everyone. Firebirds to center. Lapierre steps up, steals it. It's leveled. And leads for Pronis over the blue line. And just dump it in off the body of Olison. But Coachella Valley under pressure has really struggled tonight. The puck popped down in front of the benches. And good play in the neutral zone as well here down the stretch. Up the middle along the left wing. The Firebirds rush in. Archie in front, backhander, stopped by Shepard, rebound in front, good tie up with the stick by Lucas Johansson on Hayden. He was open in front, Johansson took the stick away and nothing. Under seven left, third period, four two Bears. Going to make this a 2-1 series deficit. Hayden shot line to Shepard. 
the old adage is it's not over. You don't have to panic until you lose your home game. There's so flying, so good tonight, but not done yet. And Burns on the dump been deflected up and out of play. 632 left. Pilon with the answer. The penalty kill comes up big. Bears fans are loving it. 4 2 Hershey. You're tuned in to the 2023 Calder Cup Finals. Let's ride together. So I can bring any car to Oarsman Fairfax Toyota and they'll buy it? That's what they just said on TV. Doesn't matter what year, make, or model. No. And I can get Kelly Blue Book for it? More. 125%. And if I buy a new car, I'll get their buyer's edge with 1500 in bonus extras? Yes. I find that very hard to believe. Ugh. And don't forget at Oarsman, we'll buy any car. Oarsman Fairfax Toyota. Let's ride together. At Social Security, we are always thinking of ways to save you time and make things easier. That's why we created My Social Security. Opening a My Social Security account gives you secure access to your personal record and interactive tools tailored for you. You can see if you are eligible to receive benefits, view spousal benefit estimates, and compare retirement benefit estimates at different ages or dates when you want to start receiving benefits. Already receiving benefits? Use your account to change your address, set up or change direct deposit, get a proof of income letter, and more. In most states, you can also request a replacement Social Security card. Save time. Go online. Open a My Social Security account at ssa.gov slash myaccount. Social Security. Securing today and tomorrow. Produced at U.S. taxpayer expense. NBC Sports Washington is your home in the District of Champions. Welcome back to Hershey Bears Hockey, the Calder Cup Final, 6.32 to go in the third period. 4-2 in favor of the Bears. Looking to get back in this series tonight. Next game up, game four here at Giants Center on Thursday. For your tickets, HersheyBears.com. Fallon stop down the right wing. It's picked up by Riley Sonner. Made back behind the goal to the far wing boards where the Bears were stepped up. Todd, all night they've just been relentless on pucks. They are making life miserable for these defensemen in the corners. They're finishing their checks. I mean, look at that. Right there. Another hit. Morelli in front. Sailed it high and wide. The wrecking ball line is back and seeking vengeance. The Rochester Americans are watching this going, uh-huh, yep. Saw a lot of that in our series. Puck at center ice. Down goes Pittman. Tripping called on the Bears. It's interesting. They're looking at Borgstrom. I have to see that again. Looks like Vecchione came in at the end, too, with the stick. Either way, a Firebird goes down and a Bear goes to the box. Power play coming up for the Firebirds. The penalty kill presented by Bokeh Mulligan de Mayo will be tested again. Here we go. Borgstrom's going to reach in across. See, there's Vecchione's stick comes in there, too. It's it almost, almost like both. more like Vecchione did it. That's what I was saying. Well, Borgstrom. Yeah, that's, that's Vecchione should have gone, not Borgstrom. Yeah. Neither of them are really big penalty killers for her. She's so pick your poison. Schult off the base shot. Firebirds one for two on the power play. It's Rafferty left wing. Down by two. They need one here. Stick to Wang. Shutter. He'll take it out to center and take it himself. Short-handed. Trying to get around Schult. Pumps him into the board. Shutter killing the clock. Now will fall back into a defensive posture. So the Firebirds will look to bring it to center. Far corner, the Firebirds set up. Well, the man advantage, center and Malenstein up top defending. Johansson and Iorio on the kill. Iorio flashing out for Oden. Lane to the goal line. Backhander and tight chip with the same. Iorio clears to the boards. Not out, though. Held in by Rafferty. Far wing. Just down to the reach of center. Schultz will play it. And taken back to the point again. Thrown to the goal. Pat saves Shepard. Rebound is there. Sutter knocks it away. And the Bears clear to the boards. Schultz with it again. Yes, for Froden. To Rafferty, spinning around Sutter. Wines doesn't fire. Throwing along the left wing. Shepard waiting in front. True is there. One time right pass save Shepard. Rebound. He got that two. Third try score. 
Firebirds make it a one goal game. It's Cameron Hughes. He had no goals in the playoffs until game two. He's got him a back to back contest. A power play goal with 4.34 left. It's 4 3 Hershey. Well, if you're trying to lock down an opponent, taking several penalties in the last 10 minutes is not the way to do it. And you can see Hughes is in front. There's one rebound right in front, point blank range, and then a second one. And not much Hunter Shepard can do as he's just kind of sprawled out, flailing to stop it. And there's only so much you can take as a goaltender without somebody getting in there and clearing it out. This is. This is not textbook closing it out by the Bears, and now this thing has gotten very, very dramatic, and not what you want to see coming down the wire. Still have the lead. We saw the response from the Bears after Coachella Valley scored previously in this period. Turinski at 633, less than a minute later, Pilon at 721. Don't necessarily need that, but you got to play the right way for the final 430, because you know the Firebirds are likely trying to pull the cord and Come up big time to tie it. And that's the next question. When do they make that move? Evans with another assist. He's been all over this series. McCormick to the point. Chella Valley. Field it here. Down by one. Shots 25 Hershey. 28 Firebirds. They've come on here in this period. Two quality saves Shepard. But in the net it goes. Hughes is second of the playoffs as the Bears were clear to neutral. And Rafferty to take it back. So right now, Garrett Pilon's goal right after the Torinsky goal is the difference make. Firebird center, McCormick in front. What a save, Shepard. Rebound, bounces around. Bears will clear it off the glass to the line, not out. Oh, remember that one from Shepard. Firebirds all over it, trying to tie in. Shepard with a glove save and a beauty. Sprawled out to his left. My goodness. 3.38 to go, the Bears goaltender keeping them in this one and keeping them ahead. 4.3, the chocolate and white in front. One last look, and we'll step aside. Close calls, 4.3, the Bears in front. Stay with us, you're tuned in to the 2023 Calder Cup Finals. The best Capitals coverage starts here, only on NBC Sports Washington. Your home of the Washington Capitals. Let's go Cavs. Hi, I'm Katie from Long Roofing. For four generations, we've helped families just like yours bring beauty, value, and comfort to their homes. Our professional and customer-focused process will ensure that you protect your home for decades to come. Call now to get no payments and no interest for a full year, plus $1,500 off. Get your free estimate today and you'll see we do roof replacement the right way, the long way. The GMC Sierra with hands-free driving. Yeah, it runs. Or did 0.9% APR plus over 1,200 trade assistance and no monthly payments for 90 days on Sierra 5.3 liter V8 light duty models. Want to eat, bet, and cheer like a Caesar in the District of Caesars? I got a guy. Follow me. Specifically this guy, Guy Fieri. And this is Guy Fieri's DC kitchen and bar. So pull up a seat, people, and get the royal treatment in Flavortown. Feast your eyes on 18,000 square feet of wall-to-wall -wall sports, wagering, and game day oh. eats. Seven days a week. Y'all have what C's have. Eat, bet, and cheer like a yeah. season. Guy Fieri's DC Kitchen and Bar. 4-3 the score. Hershey in front. It's turned into a nail-biter here. Cameron Hughes is second of the series at 15-26 from Evans. And Rafferty. Rafferty with a goal and assist tonight. 3.30 to play in this one. We'll keep an eye on Joey Decord. Firebirds lead the series 2 to nothing. Trying to come back tonight. Icing called. And face off in the offensive zone for Hershey. And the best thing to do to keep the Firebirds at bay is possess the buck. What a hockey game, Zach. <laughs> well, this is Man. what we expected yes. for these two teams. Yes. I mean, much better from the Bears. And you know the Firebirds weren't going to go away. It's too scale. Well, you knew Decord was human, first of all. You had to prove that, and they did. And they also proved that three goals might not be enough against this opponent, which is typically a magic number for the Hershey Bears. They get to three goals, they usually finish off an opponent. Coachella Valley's a, a different kind of opponent. 
Tipped in behind the Bears net. Day racing after him. Plays it far corner. Aaron Ness up the boards. Not out, but it comes loose to center. Flipped to Garrett Pilon. Down the left wing. Pilon pulls up. Fights off the hit, but Rafferty got back. Good defensive play. Rafferty's been good for Coachella Valley today. Right on the dump in. We'll get some of their more experienced players out there. True Froden over the boards. Karchi, the rookie. Rookie of the year on the ice. It's been the Bears rookie, Frank, that's bested him tonight with a golden assist. Far wing corner, 2.45 left. Evans up the boards to center. Froden with it. Pass to the middle. True leads the charge over the blue line. Shot right in the glove of Shepard. He'll glove it. Offensive zone faceoff. So Bears make sure True gets nowhere near Shepard and a little jockeying. This is when we start to peak down at the Firebirds net. What are they going to do with Joey Decord? Down a goal, two and a half minutes left. Some coaches would be pulling them very, very shortly. We'll see what Bausma does. Both teams do have their timeouts at their disposal. Drawn to the right of Shepard. They're going to put out Malenstein, Sutter, and Morelli, their best defensive line. No surprise. Sutter, their best faceoff man. A right handed center ice middle trying to win it backward. The draw on Shepard's blocker hand sign. 14 shots for Coachella Valley in this period. Carlson off the faceoff. Two players collide in white. The center ice. Bears do not tip it. This will be icing as the whistle finally goes with 227 now on the clock. It's joining us, Frank, in the first. Rafferty tied it in the second. The Bears took a 3-1 lead. Snively and Annis. Coachella Valley outscoring Hershey 2-1 here in the third. But Garrett Pilon's third of the playoffs. Lasted a minute after Torinsky scored for Dan Biles from his squad. The difference maker right now. And the Bears trying to make it hold up. Court is still in his net. Deep in his net at this time, not looking at the bench yet. True and Sutter in the circle. Draws critical lane. The Bears will take it. Mason Morelli banks it off the boards. Slowly down the ice. Will it make it for icing? No. The Bears will take that. Good work, Morelli. The ice chopped up. Able to shuffleboard that puck down, but not too far. Hunt launched to center. Froden will kick it. Looking to break free. The board starting to look at the bench with 205 left. Schultz for the fire shot. Drops it on back. Bears with three of the red line lined up. Finally dumped in by Evans. Decord looking at the bench. Still not headed there yet. Peeking out of his goal now. Bears take possession. Up the near boards. Malenstein and Evans took him down. Puck stays in. Whistle goes. And the faceoff outside the zone. A hand pass on Coachella Valley with 1.47 to go in the third. Draw neutral. Decord's going to have to stay in the net. Every second they can keep this game at even strength. That's that's better for the Bears. Firebirds are already dangerous five on five, but you get another forward out there, another score, and it could be trouble. We're down to under two minutes to go, and Bears hanging on, the fans hanging on. It's been a been an awesome, exciting game. The court out of the hash marks, draw one Coachella Valley. McCormick on side over the blue line. Decord looking at the bench. Not yet. Now he heads off. Extra attacker coming on for the Firebirds. It's Hughes. Back behind the net. McMichael knocks it free. Up the boards to Annis. He'll knock it down the ice. Foot race. Pilon after it. Trying to get there ahead of Rafferty. No icing. Rafferty pulls away and gets it behind the goal. Pilon draped all over him. Firebirds have it. 1 20 to play. 4 3 Bears in front here in game three. Huck dumped in off the glass. It rides the limp of the board. Six on five. McElrath clears it to the line. Not out. Ponderowski shot off the glove of Shepard. He'll keep it moving. Wide of the goal. Annis to the point. Backhander couldn't get it out. Kempt into Rafferty. A minute left here at Giant Center. Sold out crowd behind their club. Ponderowski to Lynn. Near circle. Ponderowski in front to Lynn. Backhand feed. Score! It's Hughes again. The game is tied with 50 seconds left. Punched in by Cameron Hughes. It's 4-4. What a beautiful setup by the Firebirds. As we watch this again, they just continue to back in closer and closer to Hunter Shepard. And then the backwards pass right there. The Bears are late covering up the forward on the far side. Cannot leave the guy open like that. 
Cole Lynn with a backhand feed, spins away, and just Shepard couldn't get the left pad over there. You could hear a pin drop at Giant Center right now. Coachella Valley, two in a row from Cameron Hughes, and it's four to four. Pilon just missed, beating out Rafferty to get to that puck for an empty net. Instead, overtime is moving for the first time in the Calder Cup Finals. Frank to center. And the Bears get a late one. The final 35 seconds. Tennyson behind the goal. Up the near wing. Frank will hold it in. Shoots to the net. Decor to blocker save. Night free. Vecchioni with it behind the net. Trying to dig the punk loose. It's taken by the Firebirds out to center ice. On the left wing. Shenin behind the goal. Ness looks over his shoulder. 14 to go. Cameron Hughes with two goals in the third period. 10 left. Day will retreat behind his own net. The Bears had a 4-2 lead evaporate, and game three is headed to overtime here in the Calder Cup Finals tonight at Giant Center. A six on five. Extra attacker goal from Hughes at 19.09 from Lyndon Podorowski. And we head to sudden death in a must win for the Bears. We said it. This is an opponent like no other. And, you know, usually three goals will do it against an opponent. These guys are really, really solid offensively. Just set up a, a you know, beautiful execution to tie the game at four. And the, the Bears failed to cover every one of the guys out of there. They're short a man and let somebody stay open in front. And it costs them. They're going to have to get it done in OT. 15 minute intermission. We'll step aside and return. Stay with us. Game three headed to overtime. The Firebirds on the comeback trail. Bears will look to salvage it when we return. You're tuned in to Hershey Bears hockey. Want to eat, bet, and cheer like a Caesar in the District of Caesars? I got a guy. Follow me. Specifically this guy, Guy Fieri. And this is Guy Fieri's DC Kitchen and Bar. So pull up a seat, people, and get the royal treatment in Flavor Town. Feast your eyes on 18,000 square feet of wall-to-wall -wall sports, wagering, and game day oh. eats. Seven days a week. Y'all have what C's have. Eat, bet, and cheer like a Caesar. Guy Fieri's DC Kitchen and Bar. An easy way to improve your mental well-being and overall heart health is to walk 30 minutes a day. Brought to you by Sheehy Auto Stores during our Sheehy Has Heart Sales event to benefit the American Heart Association and to make living a heart-healthy life easier. Everyone's a winner at MGM National Harbor with our three-team parlay of food, drinks, and sports. Find out more about our immersive sports experience at MGMNationalHarbor.com. It's guaranteed to be monumental. Turn down the outside noise with Sound Shield. This is more than a window. It's peace and quiet. Hear the difference with Thompson Creek's exclusive Sound Shield windows, filtering out 35% more noise than our standard double pane windows. And call right now to save 40%. Buy one, get one 40% off all Sound Shield windows. Hear the difference with Sound Shield. Call 855 57 Creek. At Amco, we've been fixing cars for almost 60 years. And over that time, a lot sure has changed. Cars have gotten more complex than ever. But the technicians at Amco have the expertise to fix anything. The problem is with your transmission valve body and torque converter. We do this all the time. So if your check engine light is on, let us take a look. Because we know cars inside and out. Double A, MCO. Welcome back to Hershey Bears Hockey on Fox 43.2. 
Andrew Clisso alongside Jim Jones underneath Giant Center. Jim, not the way the Hershey Bears wanted to close out Game 3 of the Calder Cup Finals. No, it looked pretty good like we were going to get a win in Game 3 here at Giant Center. Now we go to sudden death hockey. It's anybody's game at this point. The Bears have to regroup a little bit. They sc Coachella scores late in the third period there. Whole new game, but they got to collect themselves and go out and kind of play some good hockey. It's anybody's game at this point, but the Bears played well so far tonight. It started off back and forth a little bit. Coachella Valley gets one to make it 3-2. Garrett Pilon, an immediate answer to give a 4-2 cushion. Again, Pilon doing some good things on the ice. Yeah, Garrett Pilon with a goal and assist tonight. That was a hard-working goal, too. Did it all himself. He really, really did a great job with that. The guys have played well tonight. Sam Annis has played well tonight. Garrett Pilon's played well tonight. The special teams have done great. And two power play goals tonight. Frank has a goal, and, and Sammy's was another power play goal. So a lot of good things, but we've got to buckle down here. you got to get a win tonight here in Game 3. You mentioned this is a team that you could not allow to breathe because Coachella Valley, the Firebirds, they're filled with snipers. They do, and, and you know, you could see that there at the end. And like we said before in the last break, we don't want to, they don't want to open the door to let the Bears back in. The Bears fans have been great all night, but we need them in the, in the overtime period here. What is going through, or I should say, what is Todd Nelson saying to the guys right now in the locker room? I think you got to emphasize all the good things they did in the third period and in the first and the the second period as well. I think that's what you emphasize. Once again, we say it's a veteran group of guys in that room. There's no panic. Don't turn the puck over. Play smart hockey. Play disciplined hockey. You want to play five on five from this point on. You don't want to play man down at all. It's only game three, but essentially a must-win game for the Chocolate and White. Overtime is coming up, and that's kind of never a bad thing when you get extra hockey, though. Bears fans would like to be on their way home right now. Game three, overtime, Calder Cup Finals, Hershey, Coachella Valley, Todd, and Zach back after this on Fox 43.2. Withers District Gaming season is heating up, and the two-time NBA 2K League champions have a new home here in Washington, D.C. at District E. WizDG's next home game features a rivalry matchup against Celtics Crossover Gaming, where the trash talk will be loud and play will be as intense as ever. Catch the best NBA 2K players in the world in action on June 24th at 4 p.m. at District E. Scan the QR code for your tickets. While most drivers spend their lives going from point A to B, in America, we're all about point X. That's why our most versatile BMW X-Range vehicles are proudly manufactured right here in Spartanburg, South Carolina. The BMW X-Range, your next X-Venture, starts here. Hurry and release a 2023 BMW X3 X-Drive 30i for $6.19 per month. Even after 40 years serving our area, people still ask, what is a five-star technician? Well, it's simple, they're the best. When you're talking heating and air conditioning, they're professionally trained and the most knowledgeable in the business. For your plumbing or electrical needs, they can do it all. For pest control and home performance, trust me, you want a five-star technician at your home. For more than 40 years, Crop Metcalf, home of the five-star technician. Crop Metcalf is the one with five stars. 25 years ago, when I was just a boy, I couldn't imagine a world where cancer was a curable disease. Thanks to research funded by the Prostate Cancer Foundation, all of that is changing. I've had prostate cancer. My dad had it, which means now I'm at a greater risk. For a long time, cancer was one step ahead. Now, the Prostate Cancer Foundation's research is delivering new treatments to patients all the time. It's more time with family and rounds with good friends. And that's more golf with my dad. That's more chances to take you down. Join us as we finally take the lead over cancer and put this game behind us once and for all. The Prostate Cancer Foundation, they're saving lives. I beat it and so can you. To get ahead of the game, go to PCF.org to learn more. Welcome back to Hershey Bears Hockey, our intermission report. In overtime, coming up, 4-4 our score. Last time the Bears won in overtime, Todd, of the Calder Cup Finals, Alex Giroux in Game 5 in Texas. Who's going to be the hero here on the spot? On the spot, I mean, we've talked about all the other forwards scoring, and you mentioned Vecchioni. How about, I'd love to see that, wouldn't you? Number 19, put, the, put an end to this game. Make How about it five, number, four. number 18 for me, P. Lon's been great. 
He is my pick. We'll take it as long as they're in chocolate. One more quick breather. Highlights coming up. 4-4 overtime around the corner. And this is the 2023 Calder Cup Finals. After the game. The GMC Sierra with hands-free driving. Yeah, it rocks. Or did 0.9% APR plus over 1,200 trade assistance and no monthly payments for 90 days on Sierra 5.3 liter V8 light duty models. Hi, I'm Katie from Long Roofing. For four generations, we've helped families just like yours bring beauty, value, and comfort to their homes. Our professional and customer-focused process will ensure that you protect your home for decades to come. Call now to get no payments and no interest for a full year, plus $1,500 off. Get your free estimate today, and you'll see we do roof replacement the right way, the long way. With the eighth pick, the Washington Wizards select... kind of thinking like oh my gosh I think we could be sisters you know because yes, I think we look right. you know yeah, and I don't think at that time I think you're the one to tell me that we had the same yeah. birthday it's really unbelievable when you think about it because it's been like really over 20 years that you were my mother and father's banker you became my banker and now Fran mm -hmm. is in her third year of college and you're her banker and so unbelievable because I'm just 20 years old <laughs> If you need $750 or $1,500, up to $3,000, just go to WeFixMoney.com and get the money you need as soon as tomorrow. WeFixMoney.com is free to use and available 24-7, and you don't need perfect credit. Go to WeFixMoney.com right now, and we'll guarantee that in two minutes, you'll find out if you're approved for a loan of up to $3,000. Money you could get by tomorrow. Go to WeFixMoney.com. Giant Center is on pins and needles. Their Bears just a few minutes away from closing out a victory in game three. Coachella ties it with two in the third. And with Todd Sadowski, as we look at the highlights of the third period of play, this truly was quite a bit of emotions each way. We saw Carson Terinsky score to make it 3-2. The Bears led 3-1 after the second. But right back came Garrett Pilon. You're feeling pretty good at this point. Absolutely. And Pilon had had an incredible rush before. Wasn't able to finish a play. And then this time, nice little move to the forehand. And then beats the cord glove side. Makes it 4-2. You're feeling really, really good about what's happening. And then, you know, in the last eight, nine minutes, they take a couple of penalties. Firebirds take advantage of some man man advantage situations and tie this thing up. Oh, I mean, it could have been a couple more. Shepard made some great saves. That's huge first of two. Cashes in on the third try up and in as the Bears can't get it out. Decord goes to the bench for the extra attacker. And Decord off. Tying goal, Hughes at the back post. Lynn gets that pass somehow, some way. Yeah, that, that play on the right side by Lynn, that was just phenomenal. 4-4, overtime is next. Game three, you're tuned in to the 2023 Calder Cup Finals. Driven to go the extra mile. With style that's hard to ignore. The new Highlander goes above and beyond. Putting you and your crew in position to upgrade your adventure. Now get 3.49% APR on a new Highlander. Drive with purpose. Arrive in style. Toyota, let's go places. My grandfather was a Ukrainian immigrant. He lived in this DC row house and owned a tailor shop. My father managed a toy store down the street after he returned from World War II. They both loved the Washington region and taught me to serve our community. That's why my law firm, Greenberg and Betterman, has helped thousands of people in the District, Maryland, and Virginia for over 35 years. We're here to help you, our neighbors and friends, as we have done with care for so long. 
Greenberg and Betterman. Contact us. Feel better. Hello, innovation. Goodbye, injuries. Hello, science. Goodbye, seizures. Hello, tiny incisions. Goodbye, lengthy recoveries. At Children's National Hospital, we're making breakthroughs daily so we can say hello to a healthier future for kids. At Jiffy Lube, it's our job to keep you moving. With a full range of services from oil changes and tire rotations to filters, wipers, and more, we've got what your car needs right when you need it so you're ready for whatever's next. Putting you in the driver's seat of car care, that's a job for Jiffy. At Jiffy Lube, it's our job to make car care make sense with personalized service reviews that swap the car talk for straight talk so you know what your car is telling you and what to do about it. Putting you in the driver's seat of car care, that's a job for Jiffy. We introduce you to the atmosphere that is Capital One for the Stanley Cup playoffs. I really like to get to know the players and just meeting some of the other season ticket holders. Pretty special to have such a great support from the fans and that's really what it's all about. Just need one goal and this series is all new in Shella Valley. Potent offensively scored twice in the closing minutes. Cameron Hughes with both of them. We had to overtime. Sudden death with Todd Sadowski. I'm Zach Fish. Hershey 1 0 on the playoffs in overtime. Henrik Borgstrom, game one versus Hartford. Had the winner here. Cella Valley 2 1. Honorowski and Riker Evans, their goal scorers in the extra session. Zach, hard to articulate just how immense how important this next goal of this series is. It's either gonna bring the Bears within a game or put them down three. They have got to score this one. Ethan Frank on the dump in. Hershey right to left, long changes to start overtime. We're underway here in the extra session. Coachella Valley has the momentum, but it doesn't matter. All it needs is one puck in the net. And we will see if it's a 2-1 series or a 3-0 series. Ethan Frank starting overtime, a goal and assist in this game. He's come to line. Lynn to center, far wing. McCormick will bring it in, bouncing clock. Got away from Dave for a moment. Comes back to Lynn. Hot to his team on the near wing. And scary moments to start OT. Puck behind the Bears net, now on the near boards. Bornstrom looking to clear it for Hershey. To the middle for Frank. He'll take to center. Rafferty on the intercept. Hayden on the dump in, back behind the Hershey cage. It tied up for Day. Ness is there to get it. Mike Vecchio. To center, tough to handle for Frank. They want to get him off. Can't change the long changes in OT. Brought back in by Cartier. Plays it to the corner behind the net. Ness does a good job getting it away from Hayden. Hits the stanchion. Vecchioni smashes it around the boards. Kept in. Nope. Rolled off the glove of Evans to center. And now Frank will be able to get off. Short shifts are going to be immensely important here in overtime. Pilon at center. Had himself a heck of a game with a goal and an assist too. Far away boards. McMichael able to cut it off offensively. The Bears right to left in the chocolate sweaters. Looking to put pressure on behind the net. Taken by the Firebirds along the near wing. They'll neutralize the attack and get it to center. Podorowski drives it in. Jesper Froden along the near boards. Knocked back down by Snively. And McElrath pushes it to the far wing. A savvy defensive play in the Bears to center. Elon in the feet of Snively. Over the blue line. Has to delay, waiting for help. McElrath will pull it back to neutral. Evades the fourth check of Hughes. Leads for Lapierre. Onside, he'll chip and chase. The Bears are changing. Two minutes gone in overtime. 4-4 four, four our score. Game three. Jello Valley leads the series 2-0. They're going to ice the puck. And a pink stop coming out of the offensive zone for the Bears. The clock stops at 17.53. Well, certainly playing disciplined hockey. You don't want to get yourself into the penalty box. The Firebirds showed what they can do when they got an extra skater on the ice. It's always about making good decisions as a defenseman when you come up, get involved in a play. As a forward, when you have to hustle back. Hannes off the draw win with the puck behind the goal. Smashes it off the side of the net. And it comes free to Hughes along the left wing. Cameron Hughes to center. Going to stick handle it in. Trying to get around Iorio. Shot it high and wide to the glove of Shepard. 
There to the blue line, kept in Coachella Allen. Froden along the near wing. Well defended by Johansson. Harris popped the puck to the middle. No shots yet in OT. Hershey to center. Bob Pierce got it. Three over the red line. Going to the net is Protus. They just miss him. He'll take it towards the goal and smash it off the side of the net. Protus behind the goal is able to grab the puck for a moment. But sweeping in is Austin Paganski to center. The Firebirds might have a three on two. And is trying to get back right over the blue line. Four on three. The goal pass safe. Shepard the rebound just missed in front by Terensky who's knocked down and hurt in front of the net. Holding his face as he lays on the ice. Firebirds shoot wide to Shepard. To the near board. Coachella Valley with the first real good looks here in overtime. Heading off is Cherensky. Fire side board. Paganski puts it in deep. Yes, stuck in the month there. Couldn't go get it. On the near wing, Malenstein throwing a hit. Coachella Valley is Rafferty at the line, holds it in. Left point, Evans' is drive sails wide to the glove of Shepard. And pinballs around the center. Malenstein's got it. One on one. Chips it to himself. Tries along the boards behind the net. Rafferty knocks him into the boards. He can't get it. Help from Riker Evans to take it away. Mason Morelli on the steal. Fourth line out for Todd Nelson. Morelli comes in with a hit. But the visitors with the puck left to right to center. Lind with 16 20 left in overtime. Tied at four. Far wing to the goal. Easy glove save by Shepard on the soft shot from the far boards. An offensive zone face off for the Firebirds. They look sharp coming off that third intermission. Yeah, obviously, they've got a lot of momentum and confidence built up from that comeback. They're looking to try to finish this thing. Good work from Hunter Shepard. Keep this thing going. And we'll play until there's a winner. No three on three, no short in overtime, no shootouts like the regular season. And the regular season, Hershey went three and five in overtime. Coachella Valley six and five right off the draw, oh boy. New Flankton high and wide to the net. Close call there. Archie guns it wide. Macchioni, far wing, McElrath looking to break out of his own zone no! towards Frank at center, no icing. Could have been played. So the Firebirds have to retreat behind their own net. Schultz up the far wing. There is Hayden. Coachella Valley doing a good job breaking out of their own zone. The center ice, John Hayden will put it back of the goal. Gabriel Carlson tied up, beats Iorio along the near wing. Macchioni turned it over, comes back to the point. Hayden, last one well wide of the goal, off the glass. Harris looked to break out, they gave it away. Got to be more careful with the punt team. Shot from the blue line block, up ice is Frank. He'll try to get it to him. Took a little too long and he's offside. Oh, Iorio just could not get the pass off, otherwise Frank was gone. A little slow to get there, just pulled himself offside. The draw all the way down in Hershey's zone. Yeah, Frank was available early and then once Iorio had waited too long, he had to go off the board to try to bank it to him and Frank tried to time it. Just scoot it across the blue line a little too early to go off sides. Draw to the right from Hunter Shepard. There's goaltender. Needs to be at his best here. And his team needs to get him one. I think this is serious. Firebirds on the face off. Cleared the middle. Pepin shot high and wide. There's her playing with fire. No pun intended. Glove down. McMichael looking to get out of his own zone. He will chop at the center. Pilon out of midair. Legally, it rolls on net. Decord wants to move it. He's going to have to cover it. No change for Coachella. Offensive zone drop for the Bears. Stanley Cup Finals. Vegas is going to win it 6-1 right now. And that's in the second period. Barring a miraculous comeback from Florida, Golden Knights will be your Stanley Cup champions this year. They're celebrating in the in the pools with the 40-foot television screens all through Vegas if they're not there in person. Todd Nelson looks on. Six championships in his career. He wants another. You need moments like this. McMichael off the draw. Shot block. Knocked the stick of Olison out of his hands. McMichael behind the net. Trying to go to the right dot for Pilon. Broken up. Dave will keep it in. Bears with their first possession, but it's cleared out to center. Ness down for it. Again, no icing. Could have been played by her. She is Ness with the shoulder check. We'll rim it around the boards to McMichael. Leads for Day. Turned it over. Pass behind Day. Hughes in. Short side. Will curl up in the corner. Cameron Hughes with it. On the left wing. Centers through the crease. No one there. Snidely to take it. Here come the Bears. up fights. McMichael's tired, but joining the rush on the right wing. Trying to play it to P-Lock. Pass broken up. And Pilon behind the net. Another Firebird losing his stick. Wright took it from Pilon. Trorinsky to center. Rafferty will pick it up. Iorio defending. Good gap controls. It's shot in. 14 20 to go in overtime. 4 4. Johansson hit. Punk separated. Torinsky got the best of him. 
Good stick lift. Annis took it from Pagansky. Annis clear it to center. Knocked down with a high stick by Iorio. And a whistle with 14-10 left in OT. Johansson lost his helmet in that scrap. He went back in for more. They're fighting in the corners. Doing everything they can to keep the Firebirds from finishing this game in overtime. Who's going to answer for the Bears? Dicey here. Vincella tied it in the third. The Bears looked on their way. Not to be, at least, with a regulation win. Nearly six gone in overtime. Shots in the extra session. 2-1 in favor of the Firebirds. The Bears won was a little dribbler on net. Morelli to center. Valenstein and Whitcomb collide. Up the near wing for Cole Lynn. He'll fling it in. Michael Lapp to glove it and drop it. The Bears captain back behind the goal. Center on the near wing. Careful to get it out. Nice pass ahead. McElrath over his tape, but it comes to Malenstein. Got it in deep. McElrath on the fourth check. Decord plays it away from him. Morelli keeps it on the left side as McElrath smacks it around behind. Cleared up to center ice, and the Bears will pull back. Borkstrom scored early. In overtime against Hartford, the lone OT session on the playoffs for the Bears. McElrath from center, gloved and dropped by Decor. Wants to look up ice. Farm blue line to McCormick, and he's offside. Good call by the line's been drawn again. Will go all the way down, much like happened with the Bears earlier. Yeah, not even close on that one. He tried to drag the skate and just was not very effective at it. But Decor played it quickly. McElrath with a lot of offensive time on that shift came in and then he decided to blast one at the net to cord quickly on the counterattack. just didn't work out they got it in the zone though let's see if they can get the draw make something happen lapierre annis and frotis is out probably the bears best line in the playoffs most consistent at least ness knocks the puck down hayden will bring it in offside for fans that are new to playoff hockey and most bears fans are not but if you're casually tuning into this one Again, we mentioned there's no shootout, no three-on-three. Three. We could go all night until there's a winner. We certainly hope the Bears get it done earlier than that, but whatever it takes. Also, there are no media timeouts. One quick breather at the 10-minute mark for them to come straight the ice. But other than that, we'll just keep it right here. Hook shot in behind the net. Shepard to leave it. Ness to take it far wing. Danis looking to clear it for her. She couldn't get it. Ponderowski holds it in. Andrew Ponderowski far wing. John Hayden dispossessed of the puck for a moment by LaPierre. Hayden will get it back strong and escapes. The middle cart chain and it broken up. Kept in by Evans. Behind the goal, Dave first on it. No one around him. Some time to try to clear it. To Annis to center ice. Picked up by Nass. Struggled over his tape. Turn over. Here come the Firebirds. Ponderowski down the right wing. Loses his footing. And taken behind the goal by Cartier. Got a man open in front for a moment. Evans covered for the point. Rafferty's wrist shot. High and wide to Shepard. Bears again, got to make sure they're careful in their own zone. Evans from the blue line, fires, gun wide of the goal. Oh, the glove of Shepard missed the net. Brodus to try to clear it, they can't get it out. Brodin's in, he missed the net too on the glove side. Well, this could have been over a couple times. Bears saying a prayer of Thanksgiving here. Day just looking to get it out to Annis. They're dead tired. He'll flip it down the ice and it'll land flat. Brodus will try to skate in, he lost it. They get a partial change with the Firebirds trying to catch him. Great steal by Annis. Borkstrom's fresh to Protis over the blue line. On offense for the moment, but need to complete the line change. Protis will head off. Man, they were peppering Shepard on that end of things. They kept missing and hitting the boards behind him, but they are keeping him active. Thank you, Oni, to take it. Leads for Iorium. To Lucas Johansson, 11.35 left in OT, tied at four. Here in game three, Calder Cup Finals. Bornstrom will tip it in. No icing, but the Bears have not gotten anything offensively. Lift in back behind the net. Cella Valley's had all the play, even though they have two shots. Missed the net a ton of. Stretch pass ahead. Terensky winds and fires. Left pass saves Shepard. Good stick back, Yoni to clear it. That rebound trampolined all the way back to the blue line. Bears are in chase and survival mode. Paganski over the blue line, falls down, Bears take it away. McMichael and his feet can't find it, luckily it came to center, dumped back in on Shepard. He'll maneuver it to Johansson, who takes it to safety behind his own goal. To center ice, Hershey with it. Dumped in by Garrett Pilon. Decord out to play it. 
Up the far wing, McMichael will cut it off. Shot to the net wide by Garrett Pilon. Gabriel Carlson just jumping on the ice, can't activate and get the puck. It's taken by Alexander True behind his own net. A hand of steam to center. True cutting in, sticked away Pilon, right circle, Evan shoots off the goal post! It did not go! And the Bears survived there by the skin of their teeth. Riker Evans hit the right goal post past Shepard's blocker. And we play off. Puck off the stick of Carlson on net. Shepard covers it, and the Bears are fortunate that this game is not over. Well, the Firebirds look like they have a killer instinct. They know what happens if they score the overtime goal. What a commanding lead they have in the series. And this was really, really close. 10-18 left in OT. Let's get a look. Off the left post, past the glove, beg your pardon. It popped out the, by the right post by the blocker. And then True couldn't bang in the rebound with McElrath on his back. Almost looks like a double post shot. Crazy. Off the draw. Carnchi with it. Left point to the goal. Wide to Shepard. Hunter might have to will the Bears to a win here tonight. Day to center ice. Morelli after. Cut off by Olison. Who stopped Olison along the near win? The center ice, big hit Malenstein. Ness will dump it in. He gets dumped by Ponderalski. If Coachella Valley wins, the Bears will be kicking themselves. The puck deflected out of play. Get back to that thought in a moment. Quick media timeout. You're tuned in to the 2023 Calder Cup Finals. Good. The best Capitals coverage starts here. Only on NBC Sports Washington. Your home of the Washington Capitals. Let's go Caps. Hi, I'm Katie from Long Roofing. For four generations, we've helped families just like yours bring beauty, value, and comfort to their homes. Our professional and customer-focused process will ensure that you protect your home for decades to come. Call now to get no payments and no interest for a full year, plus $1,500 off. Get your free estimate today, and you'll see we do roof replacement the right way, the long way. Isn't it time you got along? The GMC Sierra with hands-free driving. Yeah, it rocks. Or did 0.9% APR plus over 1,200 trade assistance and no monthly payments for 90 days on Sierra 5.3 liter V8 light duty models. Want to eat, bet, and cheer like a Caesar in the District of Caesars? I got a guy. Follow me. Specifically this guy, Guy Fieri. And this is Guy Fieri's DC Kitchen and Bar. So pull up a seat, people, and get the royal treatment in Flavor Town. Feast your eyes on 18,000 square feet of wall to wall sports, wagering, and game day eats. Seven days a week. Y'all have what C's have. Eat, bet, and cheer like a season. Guy Fieri's DC Kitchen and Bar. 4 4 in overtime at Giant Center. The Bears, by the skin of their teeth, hanging on. The Chella Valley. Off the goal post from Riker Evans. Out to the Bears, 4-1 in OT. And that media timeout comes at a perfect time for Hershey to regroup, catch their breath. Broad is belted from behind by Tennyson. Bears fans irate. It's going to have to be egregious here in overtime. And it's trying to get above the pocket defense. Cartier will dump it in. Hayden, far corner. Meet the goal line, Iorio with it. Man draped all over him. Falls to his knees, but fights it off. Broad is to center. Lucas Johansson with it. Anna's tried to sort it out of midair. Down the ice it goes. No ice. And LaPierre looking to chase after it. Morelli's fresh. Far boards. Girls to hit the puck to center. Dave will drive it back in. Ford makes the save. If it had gone in, it wouldn't have counted. Theirs would have been offside. Nine minutes left in overtime. Hughes to center. Flipped in. Shepard will glove it. Nowhere to go with it. He will keep it for a defensive zone face-off. You mentioned the Bears really needed that timeout for a couple of reasons. One, they were gassed, and two, just strategy-wise, just to talk about a few things and say, guys, what are we doing out there? Make sure you're marking your men. Make sure you're not getting beat to the net because these Firebirds are they're flying all over the place. There's a look at the hit on Alexei Protis. 
Draw one, Coachella Valley. With the puck to the right circle. A shot and eye. Shepard down to the ice. Made the save. The rebound bounces out center to center. Riley along the right wing to Mesa Morelli. Dumped in behind the goal. Center on it first. Malin Stein trying to get it loose for the point. The Bears have it. He day last shot. Aaron Nash off the backboards. At the side of the goal. Morelli hits the deck and falls down. Firebirds regain control. Froden slowly maneuvers to center. Stepping up is Nash. Firebirds bring it in over the Bears' blue line, offside. Thought the Bears had something going there offensively. Two guys were down near the net, hanging out around the backside. That's why Aaron Ness decided not to shoot it, didn't have a lane. But they give it up pretty easily. The old adage is any shot's a good shot. In a situation like this, any shot you can get through is a good shot. You hit a shin guard, it's a breakaway the other way. You Get it blocked up ice here in an odd man rush trying to defend. No Important doubt. for the blue liners. Aaron Ness played a lot of hockey, Zach. Yeah, even if you just put it off the backboards for a retrieval. Poganski, far wing. 8.20 left in overtime. Coachella Valley too late. The third from Cameron Hughes forcing OT, leading the series two to nothing. Looking to take a complete total stranglehold heat. Turinski, far wing. McElrath stands him up, levels him. Clears it off the glass and down the ice. It's flat at center. Pilon to the near wing for Snively. Can he be the hero? McMichael in front. Way to the corner and stand. He'll knock it around behind with under eight to go in OT. Pilon kicking it loose. Getting help from Snively. Here it wiggles away from the traffic to Johansson at the point. Shot blocked by Poganski. Johansson to Pilon. There's buzzing here. Down low on that. Back into the court. The save and cleared away. Right point Iorio. Thanks to Slapper. Walks around one to the goal, knocked down. Johansson left circle, the net missed wide. No stick for Evans. Point cleared to the near wing. Comes loose to Frank, his shot wide to the goal. Bears all over him here. To the point though, Iorio missed it. And cleared out to center, someone lost a stick. Thought it was Evans, he's got one, and the puck cleared in now. Bears were sensing a knockout punch there. Had a couple of guys in front for tips. Puck to center, a counter punch on the attack from Hershey. But 7-10 left in overtime. We roll on to center ice. Knocked ahead, Frank Afrin. Trying to get there ahead of the veteran Tennyson. Behind the goal, Olison up the right board. Stay steps up, keeps it in. Olison second attempt all the way down. Should be icing. And it is as the clock will stop with 6.53 left in the extra session. Finally getting Coachella Valley on their heels a little bit. Bears really sensing it there. It's a good opportunity. You mentioned just about any shot on goal is a good shot at this point, Zach. And that's that's what they were doing. Garrett Pilon working well in traffic. You see Connor McMichael in there trying to stuff it home. Snively calling for it on the other side. Almost leaks over to him. Firebirds clear it just in time. Sutter wins the draw cleanly. Bears with pressure here. All will be forgiven. Who cares about the comeback as long as you win it in overtime and make this a 2-1 series. Pull in to center ice. Pass was off the mark. Day to neutral. Valenstein will knock it in. Puts it behind the goal. Sutter after it. This line could do it. Sutter along the near wing. Valenstein lost the stick. Morelli in front of the court. The save. Rebound. Score! Riley Sutter is the hero. The Bears win game three. 5-4 final. And they're right back in the Calder Cup finals. It's a 2-1 series as the giant center goes crazy. This game had everything, and now we have an overtime game winner. Mason Morelli assists on the play. Riley Sutter takes his time, spins around, and makes the necessary contact to get it past Joey Decord. And the first thing Mason Morelli does, it's go, he goes and retrieves the winning puck. Up and in, Decord, so good in games one and two. And Hunter Shepard on the other end. Help from the post and some timely saves. Riley Sutter, the hero tonight. And the Hershey Bears are right back in the Calder Cup Finals. It's a 5-4 victory tonight at Giant Center. And listen to this crowd in Chocolate Town. We talked about the play that Lind made just before the end of regulation with his back to the goal. Riley Sutter's just as good and even better because it ends it right here for the Hershey Bears. They'll celebrate the victory. We'll hear from one of our three stars of the game. 
Riley Sutter going to be interviewed in the building, the hero tonight. What a finish. The Bears did everything they wanted to do in regulation except close it out. And they hang on survival mode in overtime. They get themselves right back into this series. Moments before I said they could win it because that is playoff hockey right there. Crash bang, create a steal, go to the net, chip it up and in on the rebound. That's how it's done in the playoffs. Those guys are built for this time of year. No doubt about that. With 6.26 left in the first overtime session on the 30th shot of the game, Riley Sutter second in the playoffs. And then coincidentally enough, it's the first playoff goal he has shot into the net. Remember against Charlotte, it was an own goal by Riley Nash that Sutter was credited for, and it couldn't come at a bigger time. And again, that's what playoff hockey is all about. Sutter, not your noted goal scorer. The goal scorers got him to OT, and it's a guy like Riley made for this time of year that's the winner and the hero tonight. So many moments I can think of Riley Sutter in this game, and most of them are maybe a penalty kill as he took the puck down himself and killed a lot of time off, or big hits that he had as he threw Hughes into the boards, and just a fantastic game all around. It's so fitting that he gets the game winner. We're going to hear from Garrett Pilon with Andrew Kalista, one of the three stars of the game here tonight. Riley Sutter with the game-winning goal, and the Hershey Bears win game three. It's a 2-1 series deficit as the chocolate and white get the victory tonight. Absolutely unbelievable here at Giant Center. Before the puck dropped on overtime, you could just feel the tension and the pressure. You knew the next goal in this series, the game winner in this one, it was really going to change the momentum and really just be so important to this Calder Cup Finals. Let's take a look at the three stars of the game, sponsored by Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Garrett Pilon, your third star tonight with a goal and an assist and a great performance. Nearly held up as the winner, not quite. He's going to be joined by our Andrew Kalista coming up. So he gets the crown fired up. Let's check in with Andrew downstairs for our Post-game interview with Garrett Pilon. Andrew, Pilon, how, what was the talk coming out in overtime about what you guys had to do? Uh, you know, coming out, getting back to playing our game, I think, you know, near the end, we were kind of on our heels, and it was just, you know, reinforcing the fact that we got to get back to playing on our toes and, you know, taking it to them. A lot of guys on the goal sheet that needed to be on the goal sheet. What is this win and them got those guys scoring like Ethan Frank, Sam Mann, is going to do for you guys going forward? It's huge. You know, I mean, we've been getting tons of opportunities, and it's nice that the puck's finally going in the back of the net. Big thing for Frankie, too. When that guy gets hot, he gets hot. So it's a great thing for us moving forward here. Hunter Shepard came up big multiple, multiple times tonight. What could you say about him bouncing back? I mean, he's been our rock this whole playoffs. So, you know, I, I think the thing with the, these last couple games is, you know, we want to do better for him, and I'm, I'm glad that we came out here and we did. You, were ha you said you were still having fun out in California. How much fun was it tonight? It's a lot more fun over here, that's for sure. It's uh, All the Bears fans coming out cheering us on. It's, it's the best time of the year for hockey. Came out, they're all waving their rally towels. It was giving me a little bit of chills. All right, they're still roaring for more. Guy, go have some more fun. Thank you. Thank you. Fish, a lot of fun down here on the ice. Back to you. Oh, yeah, Garrett Piedlon had himself a heck of a game. Put up the sticker on the board. Win number one in the Calder Cup Finals of the Bears first since the 14th of June, 2010. Want to finish tonight at Giant Center, and we got ourselves a whole new series, Todd. Uh huh? How about, how about up here? Was that enough fun for you, calling your first Calder Cup final game in Hershey, in the building? I mean... You couldn't ask for much more. This, the crowd was into it right from the get-go. The party at the Plaza Zach from 3 o'clock on, this crowd has been into it. They played from in front most of the time. They blew it in the down the stretch in the third period, but they rectified that, man, and they are right back in it. Take a breather, radio side. Our Fairview Golf Course post-game show to come. That'll wrap up television coverage. Todd, we're on the main channel, Fox 43, as well as NBC Sports Washington Thursday. Right back at it for game number four. The Bears will have to elevate their game. We're looking forward to it. I can't wait. Look, they need to get some rest. This was a game that sapped them, absolutely. But the energy that this crowd brings, they're going to bring it again Thursday. And Coachella Valley knows they are now in a series. For our producer, Ed Albert, for great same productions for Andrew Kaliska, for Jim Jones. He's Don Sadowski. I'm Zach Fish. Thanks for joining us for the Calder Cup Finals. We'll talk to you on Thursday. The Bears win in overtime. It's a 2-1 series lead for the Firebirds until Thursday. Good night from Chocolate Town. 
Turn down the outside noise with Sound Shield. This is more than a window, it's peace and quiet. Hear the difference with Thompson Creek's exclusive Sound Shield windows, filtering out 35% more noise than our standard double pane windows. And call right now to save 40%. Buy one, get one 40% off all Sound Shield windows. Hear the difference with Sound Shield. Call 855 57 Creek. And I remember kind of thinking, like, oh, my gosh, I think we could be sisters, you know, because yes, I think we look, right. you know. Yeah, and I don't think at that time, I think you're the one to tell me that we had the same yeah. birthday. It's really unbelievable when you think about it because it's been, like, really over 20 years that you were my mother and father's banker, you became my banker, and now Fran is in her third year of college and you're her banker. And so unbelievable because I'm just 20 years old. <laughs>